the June meeting. I'm calling the June meeting of Bronx Community Board 8 to order. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Spalter and I'm chair of the board. Welcome everyone. Um, we will begin as we always do with our public gallery session. And list. Um, <clears throat> our first speaker is Karen Argenti from the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality, uh, speaking on the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and the Putnam Greenway. Karen, are you there? Yes. Great, great. Okay, you're on. Okay, thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Argenti, and I'm a member of the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality. Thank you for this opportunity to and for your continued support throughout the years, decades, really. Today, I am here to ask you to vote in favor of the Daylighting Tibbetts Brook Putnam Greenway resolution from the joint ENS and Parks Committees. You have before you an extraordinary opportunity to send a resolution to the Public Design Commission on the conceptual design of the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and Putnam Greenway. So the mission of the PDC, once known as the Public Art Commission, is to advocate for innovative, sustainable, and equitable design of public spaces with a goal of improving the public realm for all New Yorkers. To have them involved in this, in, in this early in the project and that they agreed to take Community Board 8's comments is great. Just as you are at a little city hall, they are our art and equitable designers of New York City's public spaces. Since last century, BCEQ has been involved in the process to protect our waterways. This has gotten us to the point of advocating for the funding and management of this project. Community Board 8's involvement has been critical and we thank you. Hi, Roberts, Roberts Rosemary, I have no, I, I can't hear anything. Am I doing something? Can I continue? Yes. We hear you, Karen. I, I okay. don't know what that problem is. Okay. But as you remember, since before Superstorm Sandy in 2012, Van Cortlandt Park has had flooding episodes in and around the lake, pond, and wetlands, most caused by a clogged weir, the overflow to the sewer. The main part of this project is in Van Cortlandt Park. It will provide 0.6 of a mile of access to a restored stream and riparian habitat within approximately 20 acres, including one, the upland waterfront enhancements with green infrastructure, a living shoreline-like improvements, removal of invasives, and adding native plants. Two, fix the weir, which is the big valve that allows fresh water to fill the Broadway sewer causing flooding onto our streets. Create a new valve punching through the wall of the dam, which will limit the overflow to the sewer line that floods our streets, allow extra water to flow into the lower wetland from that second weir valve that they're putting in and incorporate other flood prone areas of the park in said wetland. Most of us know it's like where the picnic area is. Um, and, and it also continues the last, oh, sorry, I was trying to get here. The last underfunded and unfinished quarter of the Putnam Greenway that is now in existence inside Van Cortlandt Park along, it will travel now along the enhanced wetland just mentioned. This is such a big redesign in the park and that they have been closing entrances, that, that they close an entrance of one of the underpasses due to flooding. It's just always wet over there. The last 20% of the project is a new linear greenway, which is seven tenths of a mile from Van Cortlandt Park to 230th Street, known as the CSX property, and a six tenths of a mile pipe section from 230th Street to the Harlem River on owned underground easements. I know many of you have questions, but it's plenty of time for that. It is not the end, it is only the beginning of project development. Most of your questions involve the new park, the one under the contract with CSX. This is the smallest part of the project. I've shown that most of the work is on city owned land in Van Cortlandt Park or on underground easement for pipes. Please vote in favor of the Daylighting Tibbetts Brook Putnam Greenway resolution. I just have one other thing to say. We need to recognize that we are a hill and valley community 
with historic flooding problems, especially most dramatic and dangerous in the lowlands. Unfortunately, today we are seeing more and more storms that are stronger and longer. These storms are from climate change caused by cutting down trees to build on every square foot of property and not increasing the sewer pipes along the way. More housing means more people, more flushes, more washing machines, more showers and less room in the sewers. It's just a math problem. And this will help solve some of it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Chauncey Young, also speaking on the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and Putnam Greenway. Chauncey, are you? Yeah. Are you yes. On? Great. Okay, you're on. Yes. Good evening, Community Board 8. Uh, members, um, my name is Chauncey Young. I'm speaking on behalf of the Harlem River Working Group, and I'm also a member of the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality. Um, the importance of this greenway project and daylighting project um, really can't be spoken about enough. Not only is it the largest daylighting project in the nation, um, which will bring a lot of attention um, to this community, um, the project in, of the Sawmill River uh, up in Yonkers is, is a focus of intense uh, attention um, and has become a tourist attraction. Um, but the Putnam Greenway, um, which is connected to this project, will connect uh, the community um, in a more direct way to the new Empire States Trail, uh, which is now the star of the New York State uh, Greenway system, uh, connecting the Bronx and Manhattan to Canada and to Buffalo along the Erie Canal and the Empire States Trail. So this linkage will not only create a safer entrance to Van Cortlandt Park, um, which everyone knows uh, crossing uh, Van Cortlandt Avenue um, at that intersection into the golf course is not a safe space uh, for pedestrians or bicyclists. Um, this would create a path underneath that road um, that would also connect to uh, communities south of Van Cortlandt Park and in the future connect up to the Harlem uh, River Greenway at Fordham Landing and connect all the way down to the High Bridge so that family members from Van Cortlandt area, Riverdale, could travel along that greenway to the high bridge and back uh, safely without bringing your children out onto the streets, whether you're walking, bicycling, or skating. Um, and as Karen mentioned, this project will not only be a greenway, but the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook is not only historic, but it will minimize um, the terrible storm flooding that we've had recently with the overflow of the combined sewage overflow system. So there's two opportunities here um, and we really recommend that the committee vote yes for this um, so that community board eight really is able to be at the table um, with the planning department, with DEP, um, as this project goes forward, as Karen mentioned, this is really just the start of this project. Um, while the property is still being negotiated with CXX, the city has committed fully to purchase this property and develop it. So we're really looking for your support this evening. And I think it really could create uh, another jewel uh, for Van Cortlandt Park to really have this project connected with it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chauncey. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Joseph Morales, speaking on the MTA student ridership. Um, Joseph? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Joseph Morales. I am a sophomore at Bronx Engineering and Technology Academy, located in the JFK campus. And um, as you guys might know, um, the MTA counts all ridership for all services, buses, subways, via MetroCard swipes. And 
usually every year they put up a YouTube video. Um, I I'm sorry, I'm just stumbling a little bit. Um, they put out a YouTube video tell basically telling students to swipe their cards. That way their ridership is counted and ridership, I mean, and service can be allocated accordingly. Now, as you guys know, the Bronx Bus Network redesign has just been implemented. And though the MTA did get some good statistics on what percentage of riders on certain routes are students, I still don't, because I noticed a lot of kids don't swipe their cards, I have a feeling that the MTA didn't notice as many things as they could have because they didn't have, didn't, oh, sorry, they didn't adjust service the way they could have because they didn't have the information that more students rode the buses than what the numbers showed. Like, for example, the BX9, I always see it overcrowded every single day, full of people my age, you know, high school students, and nobody swipes their cards. Therefore, I wasn't shocked when I saw on the final plan that service on the BX9 was not increased because I, in the MTA's views, nobody's riding that bus, at least not to what, according to their numbers, because students aren't swiping. So that's just one example. Um, Queens of Brooklyn are working on their redesigns now. And I've seen in the news that a lot of Queens parents are complaining that their, their children's routes are being adjusted. And that might also be for the same, for the same reason. So uh, my request to the board is that we ha start some sort of campaign to get people in our dish students in our district to start swiping cards. That way, when the MTA adjusts service in the Bronx again, they take students' needs into more consideration. Um, and is that everything? Yeah. Thank you for your thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Joseph. Um, this is a very important point of view, and I think that we should. Uh, keep moving on this, how to educate the students, why it's so important. Um, also, I'd like to invite you to join our community board. Thank you. Wait, we'll, for real? Well, we'll be in touch on how to apply because we really do need, need to encourage young people such as yourself. You did a marvelous presentation. I, I wanna thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? Um, let me see. Uh, Julia, Myra. Yes. Julia, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to invite the young man to come to any youth meeting and we'd be more than glad to take up that cause. And, um, you know, we would be happily carve out some time for you to give a similar presentation to our committee and see how we can help you with this cause. Thank you. And question by youth, you mean the committee, the youth committee on community boarding? Correct. I'm the chair of the youth committee, so. Thanks, nice to meet thank, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Myra. Right, thank you. Um, I just wanna confirm what Joseph said. I've been on the number nine bus and on the 10 bus and entire bus loads of kids get on the bus and nobody swipes. I mean, even adults are getting on the bus and not swiping, but kids are getting out of school and getting on the bus without swiping. And I know it's important because they need to know, besides revenue, the MTA needs to know how many people are on the bus. So thank you for bringing Thank you. Up. Okay. Appreciate it. Very good. Um, our next speaker is Joseph Riley. Um, oh, Laura. I'm sorry, yeah. you have a question from Steve Fruit. I'm I sorry. Apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. No, I apologize. Go I right ahead. Uh, Mr. Morales, I just want to uh, urge you that in continuing to to follow the situation and advocate as you as you plan to, um, I think it should be possible. It may be impossible, impossible to get students in sufficient numbers to swipe under whatever the circumstances are of their getting on and off the bus. But what may also be possible are spot check, click, uh, you know, monitoring by MTA. They do that uh, at Metro North. They do that at the subways. I often pass employees who are doing clicking to, to measure ridership. And I think that that should be possible as an alternative to swiping and less of a you know, Sisyphusian task. So just a suggestion that that might be considered by the agency. I Thanks. agree. Is it okay if I make a comment on that? Sure. 
Uh, actually, I'd like to move on because we have a, a strict timetable, but we're going, oh, to okay. reach out. We're, going, we're going to reach out to you, Joseph, um, and send you the agenda for our next youth committee meeting so that we could really get into this. Thank you. And as far okay. as joining the board, um, that and as far as joining the board, do you have my email address? Yes, I do. I have it right mm -hmm. here and we will follow up. Okay. On all these things, correct? You got it. Thank you. Thank Joseph. you. I okay. can't wait to continue to work with the board. Yes. Okay. Um, Joseph Riley uh, from the Freedom Youth Family Justice Center. Um, Joseph Riley. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, can everybody hear me very clearly? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I just want to spend most of my time, uh, a little bit of my time, and say um, I love the fire from Mr. Joseph, and uh, I do encourage him to keep doing what he's doing. Um, it's very excellent to see young people out there getting it done. Um, yeah, let me introduce myself. My name is Joseph Riley. I'm the CEO of Freedom and Family Justice Center, uh, speaking on behalf of Monique Riley, who's our founder. And what our organization does, we go around all five major boroughs spreading um, prevention and awareness from human trafficking and domestic violence. Um, I come to you today as humbly as possible to say that we're finally located in the Bronx. Uh, we have finally found a space um, on 555 West 20, uh, West 20, um, 235th Street. Um, and it's, it's a secluded area, but we still get out when we do what we have to do as far as getting this, um, let's getting this message out. Um, we've been doing this work for over three years and everything we do is circled around the youth. And our agenda is very simple, to let people know that human trafficking and domestic violence is not a foreign issue and it's just, and domestic violence just doesn't happen at the home. So um, as far as spreading this message, we understand that our youth is the power, just like Mr. Joseph. So I'm just, I just wanna reach out to anybody and everybody that's in this community board to let everybody know and we're trying to get into the schools. We're trying to get deeper into the DOE system to push our curriculum for our youth and also encourage them to do things um, that they're, they might be shy to do, but we know that they can do it. We have the energy to match them, to train them, to show them the right way, to generate that negative energy into something positive and also go out there and train and um, train and educate their peers on the, on the dangers of human trafficking and domestic violence. So, um, once again, my information can be shared all around. Uh, we're on every social media board. Um, we we have our own website, and uh, we just want to encourage everybody to just um, help us out as best way as you can, spreading this message. Um, and that's really it. That's really what I come to today, just um, as humbly as possible, um, to this community board because we are formerly with Community Board Seven, but we're just trying to stretch out and reach as far as possible. Uh, we've done work in Washington, D.C. We've done work in Pennsylvania to let uh, you guys know that it's not a foreign issue and it's not a color issue. It's a youth issue. And these monsters out here are harming our children. And they honestly don't care about our future. They don't care about um, us older people getting over these, getting over the COVID, getting over the, um, getting over the, gun, the gun problems because our youth are driving to do positive things. And if they're not here, then we have no future. So everything that we do is geared towards them, encouraging them and teaching them and encouraging all of us, the older people, to bring back the village and let them know that it takes a village to raise a child and it takes a village to educate a child. Thank you very much. And um, I hope to be working with a lot of you people very soon. And I'm glad to share all my information and um, anything that um, you guys need to help us push this agenda. Thank you. Um Thank you, Joseph. I, I also urge you to attend our uh, youth committee meetings and stay involved with the board. Uh, we have your email and we will send you that agenda. When we yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see Bob Fanuzzi has a hand up. Ooh. He's Are muted. You? Joseph, I wanted to recommend that you look into the district attorney's office. Um, they have anti-human trafficking task forces. I've worked with the Staten Island and Brooklyn district attorney offices on this issue, um, not in the Bronx, but I do suggest you start there. They're really very well organized and do have community-based organizations like yours involved. Thanks for this issue and thanks for bringing it to us. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes our gallery session and we will move on from 
uh, report from the Bronx Borough President's Office. Uh, do we have a representative here tonight? I, um, tonight is the Borough President's Firework Extravaganza at Orchard Beach. Uh, so um, they told me there was a chance that they were not gonna be able to make it. Right, I um, so I just wanted to report on that. Okay, thank you, Kira. We should all be there at the beach. Okay, uh, report from the 50th um, Police Precinct. Um, who is here with us tonight? Do we? I understand that the uh, Captain Gervin said he could not. Hi. Yes, hi everybody. This is Lieutenant Haney. I'm the uh, third platoon commander for the 50th Precinct. Oh, Lieutenant, thank oh. you so much for joining us. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just walk a little bit more quiet area real quick. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be giving the report for the precinct in, uh, in Captain Gervin's stead. Um, again, he would like to extend his apologies for not being able to make it. Uh, he's had some other prior commitments he wasn't able to, uh, to change or rearrange at this time. Um, so basically right now, unfortunately, crime is still up. Um, it is essentially going down a little bit, but it's not, it's still up from what it was last year, but it's, the increases are, aren't as steep as they once were, as they previously were in the year. Um, thankfully, combating that as crime is still up, our enforcement and our arrests are actually going up with that. So as we are getting, taking more and more crime, uh, our officers are able to uh, affect more arrests for that. For example, uh, our arrests for robbery are up 900% this year versus last year. So that's a very good number, very good work on, on our officers' parts. Um, a very notable arrest that we had is our uh, midnight public safety team arrested an individual with stolen checks. The total dollar amount of the stolen checks that they found on this individual was over a quarter million dollars, about $273,000 actually. Um, this is the second type of this arrest that we've made in a two week period. Um, so we think everyone's help, uh, the public subs kind of being a little careful as to who they're mailing checks to. And again, as I, from my own personal uh, research for lack of a better word from staying abreast of what kind of crimes that we're taking the vast a very large part of our grand larceny complaints are things of this nature people unfortunately getting scammed by con artists sending them fraudulent checks or having checks rewritten cash when they weren't going to be at the recipient and so on um, uh, another thing we're doing to combat issues in the park is starting next week we're going to have a dedicated uh car so two officers are going to be dedicated to Van Cortland park on the 40 midnight shift especially, and they are going to be uh, working during the weekend. So we're going to have officers there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, especially during the weekend from four to midnight going forward. Uh, that's honest. That's for our report. It's pretty much like I said, unfortunately, crime is still up, but again, it's starting to, the increase is starting to taper off the rate. And again, like our enforcement is going up and making some very good arrests and stuff like that. Uh, the biggest driver is still the grand larcenies. And like I said, the check cashing thing is, seems to be the biggest issue and the grand larceny owners. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, before I take questions, I just want to thank you. Um, and please let Captain Gervin know how pleased we are to get a conditions car at Van Cortland and other hot spots. Mm -hmm. Many, many complaints. And we've had several meetings, um, and they've been very positive with Captain Gervin, with the Department of Parks, with the PEP uh, captain. And we're all working together because we have some very serious um, uh, constituent complaints coming from, from parks. And yeah. thank you so much. That was great news that we got about No story. problem. Um, and I see uh, Bob Bender and David Pan. Bob Bender. Thank you, Laura. Uh, and thank you, Lieutenant. Um, I want to repeat what Laura just said. I'm, I'm delighted to see that you're going to have a presence in Van Cortland Park because as I'm sure you know, that's that's been a problem spot in the summer for the last several years. Mm. But the, the issue I, I want to address is even before you get into Van Cortland Park, and, and I am usually in that park five or six mornings a week, crossing Broadway, uh, I generally cross at Broadway and Mashalu, and I would say virtually without fail, whenever I cross that intersection, there is a car running the red light at Broadway and Mashalu. I mean, it's just become an epidemic. Mm. Uh, you know, and I mean, there's been speeding on Broadway for as long as I can remember. It only got worse during the pandemic. Mm. But if you put a car at Broadway and Mashalu uh, and, and began writing summonses for cars that are running the red light, 
I'm telling you, you could pay the salaries of the entire 50th precinct <laughs> just, just at that <laughs> intersection alone. It, it really is a serious problem. And sooner or later, there's going to be a, a tragedy at that intersection. Okay, I will pass that on to uh, our sector team. And then uh, tonight I'll have one of my officers or a couple of them go out there myself uh, and work on that tonight as well. But again, I'll pass it on to our traffic safety officers as well to do a little bit more specific targeted enforcement at that location. Thank you, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. David, you're on. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Lieutenant. You mentioned the uh, second shift in four to 12 will be uh, in the park. Uh, you mm -hmm. said Friday. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Are you, you, you said Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Is it going to be just those three on the weekend? No, or all seven they're, nights? they're there five days a week, but we made their days off the middle of the week, which we're saying like the least, the slowest days. I believe the days off are going to be Wednesdays and Thursdays. So they'll be there, so except with the exception of Wednesdays and, Wednesdays and Thursdays, we're going to have two officers there. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you very, very much, Lieutenant, uh, for all you do. Okay, thank you. I, um, I just want to say one thing. Officer Sala from Community Affairs, he'll be on the call uh, for the rest of the call. If you have any questions, he can get back to me. Um, I have to run, so I have to take care of uh, some administrative stuff in the precinct right now. I'm the only uh, one around. So if you have anything, pass it on to Officer Sala, and he'll reach out to me. I can get back on the call if I need to. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the chair's report, um, I have a few announcements. Uh, I'm very sorry to report that our consultant at DCAS informed us that the landlord at 185 West 231st Street has chosen to end negotiations with DCAS. Um, that officially ends that um, office, that the new office that we were seeking. And it is extremely disappointing as you all know, um, former Chair Ginty and myself, Kira, we have spent many, 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 many thousands of hours, you know, on this project. I will, yeah. read, to you, I will read to you the letter that Dick has sent us, uh, if I may. Dear Kira Laura, with regard to our pursuit to lease space at 185 West 231st Street, I regret to inform you that the owner has decided not to move forward with our transaction due to a fire code interpretation. According to the owner, a sprinkler system would need to be installed if the space was to be built based on our proposed occupancy and the division of the floor into three separate units. Currently, the building isn't sprinkled and is not required to be based and is not required to based on the current fire code. Subsequently to finding out this information, our architect performed an analysis of the applicable fire codes and have provided the attached confidential letter to the owner's representative for clarity. Our architect does not agree with the owner's architect's assessment. However, even with our letter, the owner is risk ever adverse and was not willing to continue negotiations. Instead, they are targeting a tenant that can take the entire 4,500 square feet of space available on that floor. Their architect has confirmed that this division will not require a sprinkler system. And they have uh, attached to this letter uh, a market survey that represented some available spaces um, that they have sent us for consideration. And um, we have taken a look at those, Kira and I have visited uh, two that are located in Kingsbridge and we have brought it in <coughs> at the executive committee and we will continue to, uh, to be researching and to be checking out other spaces. So I, um, when we got the news, we informed our elected officials. Um, I called the executive committee uh, for a special meeting. And um, again, this is a shock because on March 18th, here and I met with the representatives of the landlord, DCAS, um, all the consultants, and everything was a go. And they were designing for the new space. Um, when I say new space, it's because 
back in December, um, the Office of Management and Budget insisted that the landlord take out this huge vault. You know, it was a form of bank. And uh, <coughs> he spent tens of thousands of dollars to remove this, this vault. And as soon as he did, plus getting a new architect, he saw um, all new possibilities for the space because that was like an albatross. Um, but he, he did remove it and negotiations were going on. Um, there was a new test fit and then, and then this. Um, we've been told by DCAS, you can you know, take this with a grain of salt, but that it's becoming more difficult for, the, for uh, the city to find spaces because years ago, uh, getting a rental by the city of New York and the stability and a 20 year lease, they, they thought that was, that was great. Not so much anymore. So it's a very different real estate market. And um, that's, uh, you know, that's my update on this that I regret, regret to have to give you. Um, I see uh, David has a hand up and Deb. Uh, David? Yes, uh, thank you, Laura. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, reading between the lines, I think that the landlord has acted in very, very bad faith in this. I think he found a better opportunity um, and is using an excuse that uh, um, begs the uh, credulity of the architect, obviously, and of DCAS. And I would hope that um, DCAS and, and uh, uh, with maybe some pressure from our elected officials could remind uh, this landlord that uh, uh, <coughs> most probably that's not the only property in the city that they own. Uh, and probably not the only opportunity they have to do business with the city. Um, and uh, I just think that pressure should be brought to bear, particularly from our electeds. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Deb, your hand is up. And uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, thank you. I just want to raise the, um, there is the uh, former uh, Van Cortlandt Park Library branch building on Sedgwick Avenue that's empty, uh, 3874 Sedgwick. Um, I just wanted to raise that as a potential location, since it's already zoned P8 as a, as a, as a former <clears throat> public place of public assembly, um, and it, it's privately owned. So I thought that that might be a possibility. So I wanted to put it out there. Yeah, we will send that address to DCAS. Dan also gave us an address at Exec, and we already forwarded that to DCAS for their consideration and for them to please get back to us. Um, so thank you, Deb. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan. And, oh, no, I'm sorry, Ed. Ed was first, Ed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I basically just want to <clears throat> ditto everything that David Gelman just said. When you're reading this letter, it's the first thing that came across my mind. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're acting in bad faith and a better offer came along. Um, I don't, you know, without any, making any accusations, I think you should maybe start looking at this uh, from a legal perspective too, because it just doesn't smell right. And um, you know, just to just throw our hands up and give up and look for another place without lo looking into this uh, a little more deeply. Um, the you know the the two the the two evaluations of the sprinkler system is very convenient from from their perspective in, in terms of finding a new uh, a, a new participant in this. So really, I would I would start looking at this from a legal perspective and seeing uh, you know what you can uncover. That's it. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Rosemary. Um, I'm going to uh, reiterate and, and, and echo what uh, Ed just said. It, this is just too convenient, and uh, you're being far too soft on this issue. Uh, if, if they say it's a sprinkler issue, it's their architect. DCAS, all they did was put their architect in touch. You get the commissioner of DOB to write a letter. Commissioner DOB is in charge of saying whether there's that you got to be aggressive going after this uh, statement. It doesn't ring true at all. And number two, ask DCAS what the legal uh, possibilities are here. This is this should not be acceptable to you. It is not acceptable. Thank you. Um, Camelia. Um, yeah, while uh, I'm as disappointed as everybody else, I am extremely uncomfortable with the way uh, David, Ed, and now Rosemary put things. This is a free, uh, <laughs> free market economy. 
um, these are two independent parties negotiating a deal. I think it's grossly inappropriate for the a community board to express this type of opinions against a property owner um, in our community board. Um, we have a duty to serve everyone. Yes, we are a body of the city of New York. Let the appropriate bodies of the city of New York, in this case, they can, they can negotiate all the details. I understand the disappointment, but I think we should be uh, significantly more careful in the way we are uh, phrasing things, such as putting pressure asking how many other properties that property owner had and asking the city to put pressure on them and all these kind of things. Just wanted to flag that uh, for everybody to kind of be careful in the way they're choosing wording. Thank you. Thank you, Chameleon. Um, Dan? Thank you, Laura. Um, look, I, I'm sure the consultant was telling you something, but, but I will tell you, um, having being a transactional attorney, there are a lot of property owners who would love to have a AAA tenant with a 20 year lease. Um, so I, I don't necessarily accept their view right now that they can't find anybody. Um, it, it was true 20 years ago, it's true now too. It's a AAA tenant, um, uh, yes. Uh, second, and I had asked last week and, I, and I'm just wondering if you had time to think about this. We've been working on this since, I, uh, quite frankly, I was the chair of the board. I remember Pat Manning sending an initial letter and then you know Rosemary really carried it to, to the next step and got this going. What is our plan right now? What is our timeline looking uh, of either going back to DCAS and saying, hey, let, let's really question this or, or moving forward? What's our next step here? Well, DCAS uh, said, we don't have a lease. He, 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 we don't have a signed lease. I get that. All right, so that um, legally he's, in, he's entitled to do what he did. I mean, we could pursue it. Uh, DCAS had no desire to pursue it. Um, we questioned along these lines what the options are. Uh, so we will begin again looking um, at new office spaces. That's what we're going to do. Okay, I, and I guess we're gonna be doing this through the summer, looking at, yes. I guess yes. a report in September we already, where we've no, been. No, 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 no. We already visited the two spots in Kingsbridge that we discussed and we will continue to visit and I will, I will report to you in September where we are. Um, and we will continue working on this this summer. And believe me, uh, we will look at all options, but while they're supposed to be operating in good faith, the landlord um, at least had not been signed and he saw a better opportunity. I, I agree with David Gelman. And, and part of it is because there was a huge delay, by the way, he might have just gotten disgusted. There was a delay once OMB said to remove the safe, and that took many, many months until that was done. And then, you know, then he hired a new architect and then, you know, looked at the space again. And we had to redesign the space as well because now we had a different space. And he was bringing in another tenant, three, three elements into that space, you know, and, uh, that's what happened. I mean, they have a lot of egg on their face. Uh, we had several conversations about this. I said, well, send me a letter to read, you know, on their best, what, whatever. And they have, uh, they had, they, you know, ev everything I know I have told you. So um, we'll continue the conversation. That's all I can say, David, um, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Um, David, is your hand up from before? Yes, okay. uh, um, again. I uh, just want to note, we have spent an awful lot, as, as noted, uh, our leadership has spent an awful amount of time on this, awful lot of, of time on this. Um, we were negotiating in good faith. We had agreed in principle on, on right. the, the gist of the he contract. Again, like he ran his crazy campaign, but yeah. uh, um, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, mute she's themselves. been muted. She's been muted. Uh, and uh, we were negotiating in good faith. We had essentially come to, to uh, uh, the, the basic agreement uh, and the uh, negotiations were on terms and conditions. And to walk away in uh, this time frame um, after all that work was put into it, uh, ostensibly because you got a larger uh, space committed for is acting in bad faith. We were negotiating in good faith and this other party negotiated in bad faith. And we should uh, uh, register our 
displeasure with them or about them to all uh, relevant parties. I think that's an appropriate action by our community board. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, now I have some positive news. I'd like to give a quick update on the Irv Latimer Community Service Award. We received some uh, terrific, terrific nominations this year. Um, and I wanna thank Rob Jaglowski and the ad hoc uh, committee members, Stephen Vasquez and Chris Calhoun for their, their work on sorting through it. And we're going to celebrate um, our amazing volunteer honorees in, in September. Um, more about that details to follow. Uh, at this moment, Rob, can you yep. just give a very brief? Uh, yes. So and then I'll, I'll move on to the economic developments, um, their most valuable merchant awards. Go ahead. Okay. So we have um, five winners uh, this year, three individuals and two organizations. Uh, the individuals uh, were beginning with Danny Mung, who was um, nominated um, by Barbara Zentner for a variety of individual efforts for such a wide range of things, hunger relief, rescuing stray dogs, monument upkeep, coaching charity football. Um, he was also involved with Laura Pinheno of the Bronx Burger House for collecting donations for the Fordham Building Fire. So he's just a good all round citizen. Um, and so that's why he was nominated and then uh, we selected him. Julie Jenkins, who is uh, the, the one who runs the Stewarts of Ewan Park, um, has just done a masterful job in raising funds and marshalling volunteers, including me, uh, creating an organizational structure, chairing meetings, creating a calendar for cleaning up the parks every other weekend, um, really kind of targeted efforts from weed and graffiti removal to trash pick pickup. Uh, she's just a real uh, model for how to work with partnership for the parks and the Department of Parks. Um, and she was nominated by Ram Dat Singh, uh, the chair of the Parks Committee. Uh, Rita Freed was nominated for her work for the Noel Crescent Green Spaces up on Kapok Street, um, where she was, um, she has said, by Kevin Ch Childress and four or five other people who nominated her. Um, uh, uh, what, what does she do? She um, takes care of the tree pits along the front strip mall and the triangle area by the bus stop and all along Kapok Street and behind it. Uh, she fights erosion by uh, uh, pulling together their old Christmas trees uh, at the back of the shopping complex. And she also teaches neighbors how to garden. So she's, again, a kind of like individual person uh, doing all sorts of great things. And then the two organizations were the Riverdale Y Senior Meals Program, nominated by Bob Bender. And his nomination consisted almost entirely of numbers, astounding numbers of the number of meals they delivered, uh, 200 meals a, a day, 109,000 meals delivered over 18 months, 15 hours, 1,500 hours of packing the meals, 62,000 hours of delivering the meals, and 78 people kind of involved in that effort. And then the final nomination is the Friendly Fridge on, uh, winner really, uh, nominator, nomination and winner, Friendly Fridge on Broadway and 242nd Street. Um, and that's an organization, but it's Selma Raven and Sarah Allen who are responsible for it. Uh, they coordinate the efforts with local restaurants and others to keep the fridges filled. That fridge filled to help distribute food and vegetables to those suffering from food insecurity. You can see them anytime on Broadway, any time of the day. Uh, they're, they're, they're doling out distributing food down there. And an interesting fact was I almost nominated them last year, um, but they didn't want to be nominated. <laughs> and so this year uh, they were nominated by Barbara Zentner. And I guess in nominating the organization, she had a kind of workaround that they found acceptable. Um, so the fact that they didn't want credit uh, makes them uh, really an ideal candidate for this award. Um, so that's, that's, those are the winners. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Um, next, um, uh, Moses, would you give us um, a brief update on um, the Economic Development Committee's uh, work? Sure thing. So um, I'll try and be very quick here. Um, but uh, as, as Laura mentioned, uh, for the committee nominated or we selected uh, four very deserving and fantastic people and organization um, uh, for, um, in our community. Um, first, it was Enriquez um, Marmelejos um, from One Yoga for All. Um, then also Laura Levine um, and Andre El Saé from the Bronx Burger House. Um, Patty Cassier and Joe Spacio, Toracio 
from Cora Hardware and posthumously the late Jimmy Patton, uh, formerly of Tigerdale Automotive, aka Riverdale Auto Clinic. Um, we are all four, all four um, yeah, entities and, 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 and organizations. Um, uh, we, the committee felt were very deserving, and we really felt like represented. One, one can, um, uh, uh, can somebody uh, get muted, or did it stop? I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, yeah. continue. No worries. Yeah, we felt like we felt like fully represented um, the, in the intention um, and, uh, of the Betty Campbell out of the Most Valuable Merchant Award and really were great with um, all the nominations. We saw folks really excited to, to highlight how they've been key um, members of our, or contributors to our community. And so we're really excited to do that. Um, the office sent letters, congratulating letters um, to each of the businesses and to notify the winners. And we're looking forward to the ceremony in September. Um, to actually be able to honor them. So thank Very you. Good. We have terrific, terrific nominees. That's the most fun part of the year for me. Um, so thank you very much, Moses, for that report. Laura? Uh, yes. Are we going to be uh, voting specifically on the nominations later? No. No, the committees have made their choice. And we're reporting on their work. We don't have to approve them? No. I you do not have to approve them. Okay, that's not my recollection. Okay. Um, Last it, year, the year before, the year no, we we report on the committee's work, and okay, um, that's I don't want to belabor it. Okay, well then, it, I I would just like to make a comment uh, on uh, the economic development, the most valuable merchant. I just wanted to say very briefly that it, having such a thing. Well, under a different name is something that I recommended to the committee several years ago. And the, the final uh, candidate or nominee um, that Moses mentioned, Jimmy Packus, was exactly who I was thinking of when I made that suggestion years ago. Um, it, there, I could uh, share information with folks if they wish, but uh, he was a, uh, a stalwart uh, member of the, uh, the working community at, at Tigerdale. Uh, which was the Esso Tiger uh, in Riverdale, the uh, Exxon gas station at 2.30 in uh, Tibet. Uh, and he was there for 60 or 70 years. Um, but uh, he was a wonderful story. But my real point is that he was exactly what I was thinking of when I was recommended that we uh, create such an award that is now known as the uh, uh, Betty Campbell. So thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to the treasurer's report. Uh, Laura, just just a just one comment, if I might. Um, uh, it, it, a number of years ago, uh, it was discussed in the board whether these um, awards should be voted on by the board. At that point in time, I was chair. At that point, it was agreed to. Morning in progress. It was agreed to by um, uh, by the board, especially that. The names of the nominees, the final nominees, would be vetted by the executive committee. Uh, and the idea was there was just to make sure no mistakes were made, that the rules were being followed, that and that the, the that those names would be discussed at the executive committee and then presented to the board. Now, if if uh, if that process changes, I think you should just tell the board what the process is. But to, um, uh, to, to David, we, we we never did vote on these. It was it was a desire of some members of the board to do that a couple of years ago. We decided not to and to bring the names and vet them at exec and then present them to the board. So I hope that's of some help. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Rosemary. Yes. Thank you, David. Uh, David, uh, you spoke. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify for uh, people who are might be new to the board and listening in that this is a community board award uh, and the economic development committee uh, was the committee to select the winners of the most valuable merchants award, but it is a board wide uh, recognition for their service. It's not just a committee recognition. Thank you. Reporting in progress. Why does it keep saying that? Um, thank you, Lisa. Um, so yes, I, I do not recall ever voting on this. Um, and uh, I'll take this duly noted and follow through for next next time. 
And, I, so, and, I, and I know what Rosemary said because I would have raised a criticism about one of the nominees, but I would not do anything at this point to thank change you. it. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm sorry that um, Joy is not able to be with us tonight. She's um, ill and uh, we just, uh, Kira is going to give the treasurer's report. Okay, Kira. Sure. Um, Laura, um, do you? I see the we have some elected officials that are that have come on. Oh, I don't want to yeah. lose them. Be, you know, um, so I'm willing to hold oh. on giving the treasurer's report and my report. Thank um, you. If if you want to call on them now. Okay. Um, who who's? Uh, we have um, Assemblyman Dinowitz, Councilmember Dinowitz. Oh, and council good. member San and council member Sanchez here. Okay. I also I'm sorry I didn't um, check this. I also see now we have a rep from the mayor's office. So um, why don't we start with Assemblyman Dinowitz, Jeff? Hey, hello everybody. First, I must say congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, a few things. One, I want to thank everybody who turned out. We had four shredding events uh, that our offices sponsored uh, recently. Uh, two of which were in Community Board 8, and we had hundreds of people who came to, I guess, get rid of their stuff, um, and people were really very happy with that, and we're going to try to do more of it in the fall. In the past, we've only done one a year, but we're trying to arrange to have more because it's really an important thing for people in the community to be able to uh, get rid of in a safe way you know, financial stuff, bills, credit card stuff, and all that. So thank you for everybody who, who came. Uh, it, was, it was very successful. Um, a few weeks ago, the council member and I met with uh, representatives of DOT, including the deputy commissioner, as well as the acting Bronx commissioner regarding uh, the proposed road diet uh, on Upper Riverdale Avenue um, in order to show them that this is an ill-advised plan. Um, and among other things, uh, I think we spent about an hour with them. And uh, as we had said previously, watching the cars, during that entire hour, there was not a single car going southbound from Yonkers that made a left turn at that location. Meaning that the left turn lane is no great gift to the community because it's, it will do very little. Um, among other things that we spoke about. I mean, they seem very committed to doing this, but uh, I hope they're just as committed to listening to the community because the opposition was almost unanimous and a lot of people have spoken out uh, in one form or another at a community board meeting by way of letters, emails, and so on. Um, so uh, although I know they previously said they wanted to get this done this summer, we'll see. Um, uh, on the proposed homeless shelter, we had sent uh, another letter uh, to the city, uh, you know, raising some of the issues, asking for some information. Uh, and the response we got was, I'll use the word, I don't know, double speak, uh, but it, it, was, it was almost a routine, generic uh, response that we got, not from the person to whom we wrote the letter even. Uh, I don't think the city has been terribly Responsive. I'm sure there's going to be discussion about the proposed shelter later on in the meeting, so I won't dwell on it, except to say that the proposal has not gotten any better with time. It's not aged well. Um, the, the, the organization uh, has not improved as far as I know, and uh, no, nothing good will come of it. So, uh, And again, the community has spoken pretty much with one voice on this subject, and hundreds of people spoke out. It's not just a couple of people. Um, I do want to support what I believe will be a resolution later in the meeting dealing with both the daylighting of, of Tibbet Brooks, Tibbet Brook, <laughs> as well as uh, uh, the extension of the Putnam Trail. These are both very important uh, and beneficial uh, projects, not only for our community, but really for the greater community. And uh, I hope that they come to fruition uh, very soon. And... The last thing I'll say, and Laura brought it up, um, I just want to thank the community. Um, yesterday was primary day, and I, I'm pleased to say that I received, that, that I was not only renominated, but that I was renominated by 
a, a very large march and, and I certainly appreciate everybody who came out and you know without getting too much into it I just have to say that despite a barrage of negative mail directed at me by the Working Families Party attack machine um, people were you know ignored all the, the negative stuff and focused on on what what we do in the community so I'm very appreciative and uh, and I will be continuing to work hard uh, as long as y'all will have me. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I also want to uh, express gratitude for your letter along with council member Eric Dinowitz. We all discussed this because DOT has not provided us with the traffic studies that they promised uh, after being repeatedly asked. And um, I hope that they respond to the uh, June 15th letter that you sent uh, Commissioner uh, Rodriguez regarding this uh, terrible omission on their part regarding this plan. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, I see Chuck's hands up. Chuck? Uh, Chuck? Jeff, um, let me um, raise something <laughs> with you uh, that I think may be valuable. The only thing that came valuable out of the uh, homeless shelter is the fact that we were for the first time in many, many years working together with the Yonkers elected representatives, particularly the local assemblyman, the mayor, and Senator Stewart Cousins. And I wonder if it would work for you to try and communicate with that assemblyman and see if we can build a bridge that is lasting so that we can coordinate. What we do affects them and vice versa. And it would be in our interest to do that. The city is not doing it. No. Well, uh, I, I think that makes sense. As it happens, I'm going to Albany tomorrow because we have a special session of the legislature to deal with uh, the issue of guns in light of uh, last week's, was it last? I can't keep track, but the recent Supreme Court decision uh, on, on the gun issue. So I will see my colleague uh, at that time. So I will talk to him about that. And while I have you on that specific subject that you just mentioned, will you give some thought to the validity of the suggestion that we impose a tax of not less than a million dollars on the manufacture, sale, or distribution of fat firearms? In other words, if you don't have firearms commercially made or bullets commercially made, you're not gonna have that many on the street because it'll be too expensive for them. Now they'll try and bring them in from other states, but then they violate federal law. So think about that. Okay, it's funny how the Supreme Court can rule that we have to have national policies on guns, but on other issues such as abortion, they wanna leave it up to the people or the states um interesting but yes thank you that, that that's that would be great okay uh, thank you jeff um thank you um let me also introduce um councilman eric dinowitz who's here as well hi everyone i'm hi. laughing because chuck uh reminded me of an, an old chris rock sketch which he says guns you know you don't charge a lot for guns charge five thousand dollars a bullet you're right. Yeah, that'll solve uh, all the problems. So you're you're like a stand-up comedian. You have the same uh, same sensibilities. Um, so this past June uh, and even before June, I've been very busy with uh, the city budget. Uh, we passed what I think is a great budget, and I'll tell you why. I'm just going to give a few highlights. Uh, one of the big things we were able to do in the budget was we negotiated more oversight. We had more units of appropriation. Uh, and terms and conditions. So we're requiring certain city agencies to, to do and report things, and we're requiring them to sort of open their books up a little more. And this was particularly important for the NYPD, um, which, you know, it's important to balance not defunding them, not cutting the, the number of cops we have, but also making sure they're accountable. Part of that accountability is through the budget. So we did that and the other big one we did, although there were a lot of the other big one we did was Department of Corrections. So there's been a lot of problems at Rikers. One of the problems has been um, the Department of Corrections officers taking unlimited 
sick leave posts being unstaffed. Um, and so, you know, the mayor had wanted to increase staffing by over 500, I think it was like 526. And we said, no, instead let's have greater oversight over the budget and greater reporting requirements so that we have oversight over what's actually going on at Rikers with the sick leave and medical leave. Um, beyond that, we um, provided cost of living increases for human service providers, pay parity for pre-K teachers. Uh, there's a lot we did for homeless services, including increasing uh, the value of rental vouchers to keep people in their homes. Um, something important to me and that I advocated for was additional funding for our hate crimes initiative. Um, we have ha over half a million for the tenant advocate. Uh, I'm sure council member Sanchez will talk more about the housing wins we got in the budget, um, a property tax rebate. We got significant increases for uh, CUNY remediation programs, STEM programs. Um, and we as a council added hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for education funding. Um, it's hundreds of millions for summer rising for summer youth employment for CTE uh, programs at our schools. Um, but there's been uh, controversy over the education piece and concerns. Um, we had an oversight hearing last Friday about the education budget. And so far as I could tell in our community, there, um, there, there's a few issues. One is that schools are seeing what looks like cuts in their budget because it appears that the Department of Education is projecting that a lot of schools are gonna lose a lot more kids than they actually are. And school funding is tied to enrollment. As a city, we've lost 100 some thousand kids, 120,000 kids, I think. Uh, but the schools locally are being uh, massively under-targeted for, um, for their projections. And that's gonna uh, cause lots of instability. They'll eventually get the money that they're entitled to based on the formula. Um, but one of the other things I brought up at the hearing was that this formula is broken. The baseline funding, for example, is not enough, the baseline funding each school gets. And the way they calculate per pupil funding, particularly with regard to students with IEPs, is just broken and doesn't meet the needs of the kids or the schools. Uh, I sent out an email about this uh, with a little more description um, about it. Uh, and I'll, I'll be sending out more emails about some of the budget things as we go along. So I really encourage you to sign up for my newsletter because, you know, I get a few minutes here, but I get a lot that I can write in the email, which will provide a lot more detail. Um, but to be super clear, um, we as a council are spending more money as a, as a city um, on schools. The other question is about federal stimulus money where that's going. So that's something where we, you know, where we're of course talking with the administration on, but, it, but again, that money runs out in two years. Uh, locally, uh, we, I was able to secure uh, a lot of money for in, in capital allocations. So things like the, the Tibbetts tail, we're gonna open that up, we, we, we provide funding for a fence, the spine dive will shorefront park, the pond wall construction, new restrooms at Van Cortland Park, the finishing up the funding for the fence at the Van Cortland Park Museum, uh, Wave Hill to redo their roof, uh, 1.3 million dollars for our community centers uh, and libraries. And, and, and that's you know housing, support for older adult centers, our youth, food and security, music and arts. Uh, a lot of what I funded uh, was based in part off of the, the, um, the budgetary acts that you as a community board provide. And I know you're going through the process now again for fiscal year uh, 24, um, but I, I do you know, communicate with, with uh, leadership at the community board eight to talk about what the needs are. So that's where some of those, uh, that some of that funding went. Uh, I also, by the way, support the daylight of Timothy Brooks. So you should vote for those two resolutions. Um, just adding to the DOT uh, issue, you know, some of the issues that I see with it is that they are not addressing issues we're actually talking about. I do want to address some because I don't think I addressed it with this board. At the traffic and transportation meeting, I said, you know, what about left turn calming measures? If the particular issues you're talking about are turns, then what about calming measures? And the response the DOT gave is that there are turn calming measures along the corridor. And I went back to the tape and looked for it. It's actually not true. There's one small little left turn calming measure at 263rd Street, like right there, Yonkers, and that's it. Uh, we, you know, I know the community, we've asked for a left turn signal. And so the DOT is just being um, 
in my view, non is not really listening to the needs of the community. And I find that deeply problematic. Um, I'll just share a couple of events uh, going on. We have a build-a-thon at JFK High School campus on July 9th with the Department of Veteran Services. That's from nine to one. Well, we're gonna build tables and stools for formerly homeless veterans. So, you know, our veterans need us. And so we need at least 50 volunteers, uh, July 9th from nine to one. Um, and what I'm really excited about is our movie series at Van Cortland Park. This summer, we have four movies at Van Cortland Park. Uh, the theme is Nature's Revenge. The first movie is July 14th. It's a little shop of horrors. And, and throughout the summer, we have other uh, nature themed movies. There's a lot of fun things going on this summer. So follow me on social media and sign up for my newsletter. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Bob Fanuzzi, your hand is up. Uh, and thank you, council member, for all your support. Um, I wanted to ask if you were familiar with any of final um, parks department headcount numbers, whether there had been reduction in staff for 2023. Um, and I'm asking just because parks saved all our lives during our COVID shutdown. And in a earlier stage, there had been there some projected cuts. Is that something I can follow up with your office? Yes, and we actually got a lot of big wins for parks. And I don't want to say numbers without having the exact ones, but a lot of what we were pushing in the council was the restoration of these positions, the increase to these positions. Of course, I mentioned uh, the, the, the capital uh, that I secured locally for our local parts, but you, you're absolutely right. And it was one of the um, priorities of our council. And we got a, a lot of good uh, wins for our parks. It's not quite 1%. I don't think it was even close to 1%. Uh, but I said at the last parks here, I want to be the first council member to say on the record that we should allocate 2% of our budget to parks or $2 billion. So I'm the first to say that. Uh, but we're still working towards making sure parks gets the, um, uh, the funding that, that it really needs. Because you're right, they provided for us uh, during the pandemic, they provide for everyone and we need to invest in our parks. Yep. Okay, um, thank you and uh, be well. See you at the movie <laughs> okay, I'd like to introduce Perina Sanchez, a councilwoman. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, is uh, Councilman Sanchez? Yes. Hello, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Not not a problem at all. Um, it's great to hear the, the conversation so far. Um, so just going to pick up right where my colleague council member Dinowitz left off. And I see y'all, y'all put the Dinowitzes first, okay? I'm, the, I'm taking note, I'm taking note. You're going in alphabetical right. order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. Um, so I'm just gonna pick up where council member Dinowitz left off uh, with some, some other budget updates. Um, yes, uh, Robert, I also don't want to um, cite any numbers, but we, we were able to secure a lot for our parks um, in terms of PEP officers and park rangers. Um, I know we're, we're also doing, in District 14, I'm doing a lot of programming, just as council member Eric Dinowitz mentioned, but programming from our par for our parks and all of that is, is to be announced. I have some of it, uh, but not all of it. And we'll be sharing that with you all as soon as uh, we, we package it and, and can get it over to you. Um, we also, you know, just, I, I'm so glad, Eric, that you talked about the, uh, the education situation, the education budget situation. It's something that we're continuing to, to discuss with the administration. Um, you know, they, they, they have uh, several billion dollars in unspent funds from, the, from stimulus uh, money that they could allocate to directly to schools to make them whole for any uh, enrollment changes that may occur, which as council member Dinowitz uh, has said, uh, we, and I'm hearing the same in district 14 next door, uh, many of our schools are saying, no, we're not going to see these enrollment changes that like we fully anticipate at the school level uh, that we're gonna see folks coming back, um, you know, and, and the COVID times those numbers were a fluke. So we're continuing to push on, on this front. We're, we're not going to stop. Um, and and we, we feel it, we feel it. I know uh, Council Member Dinowitz and I, we've received individual estimates at how this can affect our schools and our schools are appealing. And so, so are we as uh, at the council. Um, we also, just to talk a little bit about um, major win for, for, for me, we didn't get everything we wanted uh, in, the, in the budget by any stretch. 
But one major win was that uh, for in the area of housing, we were able to secure an additional $237 million for city perhaps vouchers, uh, which can go just a really long way in uh, stabilizing more people, you know, affordability, uh, housing affordability is the number one concern in District 14, and it turns out citywide uh, after after the mayor released the New York City Speak survey. And so an investment like this uh, to, to make sure that our city perhaps vouchers are more valuable is, is important, coupled with uh, a, a restaffing uh, of the source of income discrimination unit uh, in the Commission of Human Rights, uh, which had been uh, down to zero staff, if you would, if you would believe that, um, even though it's such a rampant issue. Um, so a lot of great things in in the budget, a lot of great citywide wins. Uh, locally, I would say, uh, I would highlight a few. Uh, we secured five million dollars for the Kingsbridge Armory. Uh, to it's if you've been in there in the last year or two or several, it is in such rough shape that the public cannot access it. And so uh, it, it's a priority of mine, period, to redevelop the armory. And I look forward to so many conversations with all of you as we kind of craft a process that's going to be uh, inclusive and, and sort of driven by community. Uh, but, you know, first order of businesses, I want you all to be able to see it. I want folks to be able to go in and actually see the armory. And so this funding is going to go toward uh, making re emergency repairs in the armory so that the public can see it uh, because it's hard to reimagine a building that has been not accessible to the community for decades. Uh, so that's first. Second, um, it's not in it's not in CB8, but uh, we secured a, a closing $7 million for a community health center on 183rd and Morris uh, with the Morris Heights Health Center. If you know 183rd and Morris, you know that they need, <laughs> we need a, a community center there. And it, I think it's going to be, it can be catalytic. And so there's going to be youth services there, senior services there, all sorts of things. And it's a, it's a little ways from CB8, but come on down and, and uh, express your views about what, uh, how that should be designed and, and what we should do there. Um, and then a lot for our, our schools. I won't go into the PS by PS by PS by MS, um, but we, we really fought hard for, for our local schools to receive funding in this budget. Um, one other thing, I, I, I won't mention too many legislative highlights. So we're, we're going into our version of recess, even though we, we're still in session in the summer, um, fighting a lot for a, a focus on a code enforcement. Uh, so I have uh, several bills that I won't go into it at the moment, uh, but I do want to highlight that this Friday, July 1st at 10 a.m., uh, the council is going to be having a hearing on the mayor's recently released housing plan. Uh, if you have thoughts, feelings, uh, critiques, please join me. <laughs> um, I, I will be chairing the hearing for housing and buildings, and I think it's just really important that this document that is supposed to be guiding what the administration's approach to housing writ large is over the next four years, um, that that document uh, has input from the Bronx and that, that document is, is discussed thoroughly. So we'll be having the first hearing on Friday uh, because it was just released um, and then we'll probably be picking it up in the fall, focusing more on uh, other sections uh, or particular sections of the plan. Um, Finally, I just want to highlight a very big to do that is happening. Uh, the, the state and the federal levels of government have just gone through it, uh, but we at the city level are embarking um, more so on our redistricting process. And so next week, July 6th, is the first Bronx hearing on redistricting. Um, if, you, if you don't like uh, Councilmember Dinowitz, I'm sure we, we, all, we all love Councilmember Dinowitz. If you don't like me, um, you know, please make sure that, that you show up and, and you share that. But, but in all seriousness, you know, it, this, these are really, really important discussions. Uh, there's going to be this round of hearings. The Bronx's hearing is July 6th. Um, and then after that, the, the redistricting commission is going to be producing draft maps. After the draft maps, just like the state and federal process, uh, there's going to be another round of hearings, one, one per borough, another opportunity to weigh in. But it's just really, really important that, um, that folks are, are heard. You know, I, I, in our briefing with the Bronx delegation last week, we heard a lot about how we need to make sure that the Bronx shows up and all of that. Um, but they just told us last week. <laughs> Ugh, frustration, but that's okay. So July 6th, uh, if you can, please participate. I think there's a virtual option and an in-person option and just, you know, 
please, uh, if, if you can spread the word, um, I will be there and I'm, I'm sure, and I look forward to seeing many of you. Um, we have a block party uh, coming up in front of our office. Uh, we'll, we'll follow up with more information. It's on July 30th. And I know that because it's the same day as my baby shower. So I'm gonna go from the block party and partying with the community to partying with my aunts and uncles uh, and hopefully uh, getting some nice things for, for our baby who's coming in August. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much for your oh, time. Oh my goodness, congratulations and wonderful. Uh, it's always uh, great to hear from our elected officials. Um, have a wonderful and healthy uh, summer. Okay, so um, let's move on to our treasurer's report, Kira. Okay, Kira is doing a screen. So as, as Laura mentioned, um, Joy uh, is not here tonight. She's feeling sick. Um, so I will briefly go through this treasurer's report. I would first like to note um, that this treasurer's report is based on um, an OMB summary report from, um, I think May, the end of May or beginning of June, um, the end of May. So obviously June is a very busy month for us fiscally. We're, we're wrapping up some of our orders. We're paying the rest of our bills. So I don't want anyone to be alarmed by some of these numbers um, because we've spent down a lot of these funds. Um, I'll go through it briefly um, and then I'll jump into my DM report. Um, our budget each year is $269,354. Um, that's including um, $5,000 that was allocated by council member Rodriguez's office. We did not receive any special funding for this fiscal year. Um, and we just spent that $5,000 planting trees, which was a suggestion by of Carmen De La Rosa, who's the council member in that district now. Um, those trees were planted last week in Marble Hill, um, and we were really excited to get that done. Um, other than personal services, um, as of a month ago, we had $12,145 left. I was just calculating here. Um, as of tomorrow, we'll um, have spent down probably another 6,000 of this, um, which is nice. We're not sending back too much money to the city. Um, there's no budget modifications. Um, and then this is kind of what was encumbered um, earlier on in the month. Thank you to Tanya. Most of these bills have been paid. Um, in my four years in CB8, we have never been in this good shape that we are in this year, um, getting our bills paid, um, not rushing at the very end. So Tanya, I appreciate all of your help with this. Um, and then that next is just the rent and energy detail. Um, again, this is a separate budget that's maintained directly by OMB. Each year we fill out a, um, or several times a year, we fill out a lease report, letting them know what we owe in our lease. Um, and they give us the money and we kind of just spend it down each month. Um, same with electric, that's completely handled by OMB. Um, and that's the report um, for June. I will, any, any other questions? Dan's hand is up here. Okay. Just uh, two, two quick questions. One, how much, will we have remaining? I know you said we're, we're not nearly that much, but how much will we have, even even if it's a ballpark number? Well, it was at um, 12,000 a month ago in OTPS. I expect um, we will have probably six or 7,000 in OTPS left. But right now we're not sure? Um, yeah, like between six and 7,000. I'm looking here at my numbers. Okay, and-, and, and that's maybe... OTPS. And, and Kira, look, I, I don't remember if you were on here. I remember a number of years back, we, we had a, we spoke about, you know, the amount of money that needed, you know, that we would bring to the board. And just to get from you guys spent $5,000 on the trees. Uh, that's what was given to us by council member Rodriguez. Understood. But you're saying that Bronx Community Board 8 paid out that $5,000 to plant trees somewhere? Yes. Who did we give that money to? The parks, um, the parks department. Gotcha. And, and do we know where those trees are going? 
Yes, they're in Marble Hill. I can give you the exact locations mm -hmm. um, tomorrow. They're planted already. Got it. We were excited so, about that. So when was the expense approved? When after they were planted. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I don't I don't understand your question. I'm when sorry. did I guess when did the board or you know the chair or the treasurer approved to spend the 5k of, of these funds oh, um, after we met with the council member sometime late winter early spring okay just uh, and, and maybe i missed it i don't remember hearing about this before we've okay. discussed it, it, it it's been mm -hmm. discussed at exact several times gotcha yeah. okay thank yeah. you yep yeah. camelia uh yeah kind of the same question actually as then because uh I would like the answer to be a little bit more uh, detailed. I mean, so exec approved five thousand dollars to be spent on trees, which I love. But I just no. want to understand the. Well, this is what Laura just said that it was approved in exec. So my no, question it was, was discussed at exec. Okay, so wait, uh, and then ask when was it approved? My general question is if there are rules as to what can be approved by how much by whom so like exec can approve up to five thousand full board approval is required up to you know if more than a certain amount that's what i'm asking it's the the core of dance question is how are this what's the process to approve expenses such as this first of all let me just clarify that um when donis uh, then council person donis rodriguez gave us the same exact funding and he has done this for a few years um it was graffiti removal in in his district in marble hill this year um we went to the councilwoman and we explained you know diff we talked about different options and she said i really would uh, would like trees so it came from her office this everyone knew the amount it's been on the treasurer's report for months and months and it was discussed in exec that we were doing this. Um, and we was it a formal answer, vote uh, at, for the full board? No, but this is this is um, the process we have done. So, Laura, just to simplify, essentially, if a council member gives us the money and asks us to spend the way they want us to spend, we do that. Is this correct? We work. We take with that it into office. consideration. Yeah, we, we work with that so office. I just want to answer some questions and clarify some things. There's a procurement guide that was put together by one of our treasurers um, over two years ago that we follow. Um, it's not a city procurement guide. It's a guide that the community board put together, um, and so we follow the rules of our procurement guide, which is so far advanced than what the city provides. So we followed the procurement guide to a T and that and we came up with our decision um, that way. Can, can the procurement guide be circulated? Because I think this sure. is an issue that will come up over and over again, actually. Sure. In the I think it might be on our website, but I'm happy to share it with you. Chuck? I think I'm about to do something I have never done before. Agree right. with, <laughs> agree with Camilla. Um, I think in the future, we need not just to stop at the executive committee when you have a significant appropriation, but to at the very least formally advise the board and in my view, probably get a board vote of approval. You can do it through the minutes, you can do it in any way you want. The executive committee in my view doesn't have the legal power to do that kind of thing. That's just my view. Thank you. Okay, um, we, we're ready to move on. Okay, let me see what's next here. District manager's report. And thank you, Kira, for that report. Thank you. Um, okay, let's go. Um, thank you for all who um, tabled at the Marble Hill Block Party. I know it was such a huge success. We will be tabling at other summer events such as Riverdale Pride, National Night Out, Marble Hill Family Day. If you know of any events going on in your community, please let us know. We'd like to make, um, make ourselves present. Our Yankee awardees attended a Yankee game a few weeks back. Um, and thank you to the Yankees for giving us tickets. We provided them as we always do to local community groups. Um, 
and the youth in our community. The office will be sending um, out committee signups soon, and we appreciate a prompt response. Um, for new committee chairs, exec counts as one of your committees, um, but oftentimes committee chairs do join um, two other committees. Um, let us know if you have any questions and we can, we can help you through that. There's been um, a transition of many of our liaisons that we work with in city agencies. Um, it's very difficult now while they're all being hired, but I will just report that Juton Horseman, who was our liaison to city planning in the Bronx, is now director of planning at the Bronx Borough President's Office. So we'll be seeing him um, in a similar but different role. Um, it, it was reported on that we've met with the Parks Department several times, NYPD, PEP, to go over certain issues at our local parks. And as we learned today, there will be a um, vehicle stationed up in Cortland Park. So hopefully that will deter um, you know, people from illegally partying and so on. Um, and then one more thing, a lot of you have had issues with um, the sexual harassment training. You're not alone. Every board is going through this. Um, the borough president's office is going to be holding a webinar training that will count towards um will count instead of that training so i just learned of that this evening once i get more details i will share it with you um and you know some of you have come into the office to do the training and we've been able to kind of figure it out together um like i said i never got the email that you guys should have received so it's hard for me to walk you through the process because I never got a lot of the information. So I've just learned from what some of you have shared with me. Um, so thank you for those who figured it out and sent us your, uh, your certificate. And for the rest of you, we'll work together on getting it done, um, but the deadline will be extended. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. Um, we do have a new, NYC Department of City Planning uh, representative. I don't believe there's anyone here tonight. Uh, uh, Laura, uh, Adrian Cacho has his ha hand up. It seems like he's from the Councilman Sanchez's office or Council Member Sanchez's office. Uh, Adrian, go ahead. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I was trying to write in the chat, but it seems like the uh, in, in meeting chat function was disabled, but I just wanted to follow up with what the um, Council member had mentioned regarding the uh, redistricting hearings and and again you know I introduced myself um, as a part of her team. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions regarding that um, definitely feel free to email us at district 14 um, at council.nyc.gov or you can email me directly um, at ACACHO at council.nyc.gov regarding that or um, anything else that. Thank you. That was mentioned Thank regarding you. the budget and our liaison with that with the office. What was that? I'm sorry. Well, you 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 are our liaison with uh, Councilwoman's office. That's correct. Yep. Correct. Excellent. Thank you. We will get to know each other. <laughs> Thank you. Looking forward uh, to it. Okay. And um, let's see. Uh, we will we will endeavor to invite the um, New York City Department of City Planning rep uh, to our meetings. So we will look into that uh, to see if we can get some regular attendance there. Okay. Um, roll call. Roll call. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Um, here we go from the top. Sylvia Alexander. Here. Uh, Constance Barnes Watson. Here. Bob Bender. Here. Kelly Buford. Buford. Okay. Uh, Chris Calhoun. Here. Joy is not. Sebastian Chitalapoli. Yeah. Lisa Daub. Here. Margaret Della. No. Margaret Donato. Here. Uh, Moses Asemia. I saw Moses. Moses. Here. Sorry, I'll be. Yeah. Uh, Bob Fanizzi. Here. Nick Fazio, Steve Fruit, here. David Gelman, present. Rosemary Ginty, here. Uh, Julia Gomez, here. 
Ed Green. Here. Rob Chiklowski. Here. My, uh, Myra Joyce. Here. Um, Bob Kaplan. Present. Uh, Chuck Merdler. Definitely here, but we'll come back. I'm sorry, President. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ted Morris. <laughs> Didn't see. Omar Murray. Here. <laughs> Dan Patternack. Present. Aaron Pesh. Uh, Rita Proctor Lowe. Here. Julie Reyes. Present. Uh, Georgia Santiago. Ram Dot Singh. Present. Laura Spalter. Present. Camelia Teplas. Present. Deb Travis. Present. Stephen Vasquez. Present. Sergio Villaverde. Marty Walpoff. Present. And I'll just go back quickly. Uh, Margaret Della. Nick Fazio. Ted Morris. Karen Pesh. Georgia Santiago. Sergio Villaverde. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, now we'll have report from the nominating committee. Uh, Dan. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, the nominating committee sent out its final report. Um, I would trust that everybody has received that. Um, Laura, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, Kira, can I share a screen to put up the report? Or at least I guess the slides, so that way folks can see them as well. Um, sure, go ahead. Great, thanks. Let me find that. Is that what I, yeah. Um, that way you can visual share screen, nominating committee. Okay, I trust everyone can see the slates that we have right now. So I'll just give a very brief report. You know, we started our work just after the April board meeting. Uh, we, we nominated our, our chair. I guess I drew the short straw on that. Um, we went forward. I would just make one note. Um, you know, this year our, our committee decided that for interviews, we were only gonna interview uh, those individuals who are coming into a position um, in, in its first year. Um, and those chairs who were, uh, or who became chairs or officers in the midterm uh, of this present season. Uh, so we did conduct interviews, we moved forward, we had a number of meetings, um, and this is what we present to the uh, board. Um, we have a slate of officers, we have a slate of committee chairs. We do make one note that there is no nomination for the Parks and Recreation Committee, um, and, and that's because we didn't have any individual board member applying for the position. Um, that being said, um, if anyone has any questions, we could certainly answer them. If not, Madam Chair, we would like to move forward with, I guess, the, the two slates that we have. Thank you, Dan. And, thank you. Uh, and thank you for doing such a, an excellent job and the entire nominating committee for your participation on uh, stepping up. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. So um, before we begin the election, I- Laura, I, Laura, I have a question for Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I didn't have that up. Let me put that up and I can see hands. I see Ed and Chuck have questions. Okay, sorry, uh, Ed. Hey, Dan, I, I just, I'm not familiar with how this process works like, so there's no nomination for Parks and Recreations. When that meeting uh, meets, mm -hmm. what, what's the process? I mean, how, how does a, a meeting get facilitated in lieu of have, not having a chair? Yeah, so I could answer that question for you. It's, I um, could also answer that question, what we're going to do, what the next so, step would be. So for tonight, the truth is, as we move these slates forward, there is still an opportunity at this moment and at this meeting for any particular board member to step up and nominate themselves, or another member of the board can nominate another individual for that position. Um, however, if there is no individual elected this evening, the board bylaws uh, do call for what occurs when there is a vacancy in a chair position. 
um, and the board bylaws. I don't know, if, Laura, if you want to state them, you, you certainly yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we would do is I would um, ask Bob Bender, a former parks chair uh, for 13 years, to head up those meetings in the fall, and we would hold another election, um, you know, in the fall. So we will have uh, a parks committee, and I have faith, you know, and 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 I, I was going to make this announcement, but I wanted to see what happened tonight from the floor. So uh, I was going to make that announcement, depending on what happened. But um, just to just to supplement that, Ed, you know, the, the bylaws call for the election of a chair within two board meetings of the vacancy occurring. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, Chuck, I uh, know. Uh, did I say? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Sylvia. Um, I just wanted to, to bring up a housekeeping thing. Um, my committee is ELCA. You have ELCR. Yep. I don't know what they were thinking, but I think it's just a typo. Yep, it is definitely a typo. Thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. I don't see any other hands. Okay, um, before we begin, I just want to take a moment to thank our outgoing chairs for all their hard work and commitment to the board. And that's you, that's Dan, uh, Padanak, Deb Travis, Bob Fanuzi, Ramdot Singh. Um, I want to uh, thank you for, uh, uh, it's a hard job being chair. It's. Uh, and so we're, we're grateful that you stepped up and we're going to be grateful to the new chairs tonight. Okay, um, let's look at the, consider the officer positions first. Um, please raise your hand if there are any nominations from the floor for chair. I don't see hands. For vice chair or secretary for treasurer. Um, if there's no opposition, I move to close nominations then. Is there a second? Second. Um, next, is there a motion to vote the slate? Motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, so now we'll vote. Um, please raise your hand if you are opposed to the slate. Don't see any hands. Please raise your hand if you are abstaining. Okay, so that is unanimously voted upon. Um, now we'll move on to the committee chairs. Um, I'm going to take out the Parks and Recreation Committee for this moment, all right? And we'll return to that. Um, I'm asking the same question to please raise your hand if there are any nominations from the floor for the aging committee. I mean, we see our slate. I don't have to repeat the slate. Um, are there any hands? Um, are there any nominations from the floor for the budget committee? We move on to economic development committee. Education, libraries and cultural affairs environment and sanitation, health hospitals and social services, housing committee, land use, LRE, public safety, traffic and transportation, youth committee. Okay, so uh, seeing that there's no um, anything from the floor, um, I make a motion to close nominations. Second. 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 Thank you. Um, and now we'll take a vote. Uh, oh, so we're going, uh, I make a motion that we vote for the slate minus the parks committee. Second that motion. Okay. Uh, please raise your hand if you're opposed to the slate. Please raise your hand if you're abstaining. Okay, I don't see any. Um, I'd like now to consider the Parks and Recreation Committee. This is a crucial committee, a critical committee um, to our board. Laura you, Laura, you have to declare the slave elected. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chuck. Uh, unanimously, 
the slate has been elected. Okay, thank you. We did vote. Yes, we did. Um, okay, are there any nominations from the floor for the Parks and Recreation Committee? I, I don't see any, so I'll repeat that uh, Bob Bender, former Parks Chair, uh, will lead us in the fall and we will hold another um, election and uh, see what happens there. So we will have uh, coverage, very important committee. So I wanna thank the nominating committee again. And um, we, I did remember Chuck to vote for this slate, correct? Yep. Yes, I did, <laughs> okay. So this concludes our elections for this June. And we will go on now to committee reports. All right, uh, Marty, Law, Rules and Ethics. Uh, thank you, I'll keep this brief. Uh, just two observations before I make my one report. Observation number one, uh, today or tomorrow is the last day uh, of the Zoom under the uh, governor's emergency action. So unless she extends it, this is our last good time together. If we go into uh, the, uh, the hybrid model, just note, Many of you, and I haven't done it yet, but will. Um, if you are on hybrid, you cannot turn your your, uh, your your camera off. You must be on camera all the time. Just a note. Uh, last month, I distributed. I had the office distribute the guidelines for uh, conducting meetings. I asked for comments. Uh, I've received no comments since it first, since it was commented on and went to you. And therefore, I'm offering you that the, the copies you received in the last day or so uh, will be part of the handbook for board members. Chairs are advised that uh, they can use or not use or modify or whatever uh, the guidelines. However, it's believed that the community in attending a meeting will have certain expectations about what will take place at a meeting. And so uh, I just advise you of that and wish you all a great summer. Thank That's you. It. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, seeing no hands, we'll move on to Parks and Recreation, Ramdot, and uh, we'll present a resolution we have for parks and then a joint resolution for parks and ENS in that order. So um, oh, you want to put that on the screen. The first. Oh, Kira, can we do the um, Van Corley Mansion first? Sure. Thanks. Hey everyone, good evening. Uh, so we, as Laura mentioned, we do have two uh, resolutions from parks. One is a joint. Um, the first one is a resolution on Van Corlin Park, the Aryan fence. Um, this is the fence around the Van Corlin Park mansion. Um, so the mansion needs fence restoration. Uh, it was found that the, the fence is rusting also, it has been painted with lead paint. Um, and the project is actually fully funded by council member Eric Benowitz's office, um, 2.7 million. Uh, so the project is fully funded. So parks came to us uh, just wanting us to draft something in approving it um, that will send to PDC. Um, the plan for the route iron fence has also been delivered to PDC already. Um, and this includes restoration of the fence. And then when the fence is restored, it'll be painted with three coats of paint. Um, so whereas I'm gonna read through the resolution um, for you all, uh, whereas representatives from the Department of Parks and Recreation, DPR, appeared before the Parks and Recreation Committee of Community Board 8 at its meeting of June 22nd, 2022 to present a proposed design for the renovation of the raw iron fence 
around Van Corlin House Museum. And whereas the renovation of the badly deteriorated fence, deteriorated fence, which contains lead paint, has been a priority of the committee and the Van Corlin Park Alliance for several years. And whereas the DPR representatives answered questions from committee members and other attendees regarding the project and assured those in attendance that no lead exposure would take place in the park and neither would the heavily used pathway adjacent to the fence on the north be closed during the project. And whereas DPR asked the committee for its support for the project, therefore be it resolved that the committee supports this project as presented on the condition that DPR return to the committee if there's any substantive alteration to the design as presented to the community. And the resolution passed our committee unanimously. Are there any questions for Randot on the resolution? Deb. Oh, I just had, I think Rob Jakowski's uh, last name is missing a K. Yes, Can, I'm sorry. Can we edit? Yeah, thank you, Doug, for that. Yep, okay. And uh, Bob Bender. Yes, uh, I, I want to uh, offer a friendly amendment, Ramdat. Um, if you look at the uh, third paragraph, uh, the third whereas, uh, you'll remember that at the Parks Committee meeting, uh, we were told that the House Museum would remain open during the renovation of the fence. And I think it's important to include that in uh, the resolution. Uh -huh. So what I would propose is that in the third paragraph, the third whereas in the third line, that's, um, well, actually on the screen, it looks different from the way it printed out for me, but I'll just read it. Um, uh, no lead exposure would take place in the park. And, uh, and here's, here's the amendment. And that the Van Cortland House Museum and the heavily used pathway adjacent to the fence on the north will remain open during the project. Perfect. Okay. And, and one other thing, I want to personally thank Ramdot for his leadership uh, and uh, for chairing this committee over the last couple of years. It's, it's an active committee, as you said, Laura, and Ramdot has done a terrific job. And um, I thank you personally, Ramdot. Thanks, Bob. Excellent. Okay, so I see no other hands for discussion. Um, is there any, let's take a vote. Uh, is there anyone opposed to the resolution? Please raise your hand. I am not seeing any. Is there anyone abstaining? Okay, then that's a unanimous approval. Okay, thank you very much. Now that new whereas, is somebody sending it into the office or? Kira, did you get that? The friendly amendment? Um, either, yeah, either way we, we can do. We'll talk to Ram Dot tomorrow. Yep, no worries. I have it. I can send okay, it in, Kira. Perfect. Thank perfect. you. Okay. Um, now we'll pull up a second resolution, the joint resolution. Okay. And so uh, Ramzat and, and Bob, you're on. Everyone, thanks for taking the time to read a lengthy resolution. Ramzat's going to start. Um, for those of you who need a little bit of background, um, the joint DEP and DPR project is um, going before the Public Design Commission for a conceptual level review on July 11th. And that is the occasion for this um, resolution. So Rambel, can you read the whereases so that we all? Yep. Um, whereas the joint New York City Department of Environmental Protection DEP and Department of Parks and Recreation DPR are submitting their design, daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and construction of a greenway between Hester and Perros Mill Pond. Van Corlin Park and West 230th Street, uh, Bronx, to the City Public Design Commission, PDC, for conceptual local review on July 11th, 2022. Whereas DEP and DPR presented their preliminary design for the delaying of Tibbetts Brook and Putnam South Greenway 
So a joint meeting of Bronx Community Board 8, Environment and Sanitation and Parks and Recreation Committees on December 17th, 2021, and presented daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and construction of a greenway between Hester and Piero's Mill Pond, Van Cortlandt Park, and West 230th Street, Bronx, which will be submitted to the PDC for conceptual review to a joint meeting of Bronx, CB, ENS, and PNR committees on May 25th, 2022. Whereas Bronx CB 8 197A plan adopted by the City Planning Commission and the City Council in 2003 proposed including reuse of the abandoned old Putnam Line Railroad right of way south of Van Corlin Park as an opportunity for the creation of a new multi purpose linear open space in Kingsbridge. And whereas on October 12, 2010, Bronx CB 8 voted to approve a ULERP application by DPR to amend the city map in order to establish one, a park running generally alongside the major Deegan Expressway between 230th and Van Corland Park South, and two, a park addition to, addition to Van Corland Park between Van Corland Park South and the Bronx Westchester County line, and to authorize acquisition of real property CSX Row. Whereas on May 13, 2014, Bronx CB8 passed a resolution adopting the Van Cortland Park Master Plan, which presented conceptual plans to construct a mixed use greenway, utilize green infrastructure, and daylight Tibbetts Brook inside Van Cortland Park and along the proposed Putnam South Greenway. Whereas Bronx CB8 unanimously passed resolutions on April 12, 2016, April 19, 2017, and February 13, 2018, in strong support of the Putnam Greenway and daylighting of Tibbetts Brook, citing their unique, recre unique recreational, economic, and environmental benefits. Whereas repre representatives of Bronx CB8 attended meetings of the newly formed Tibbetts Advisory Group on March 10th and April 19, 2022, and the TAG site visit on April 21st. Bob, I'm gonna hand it over to you for the uh, resolve clauses. Thank you. Therefore, be it resolved, Bronx Community Board 8 supports the concept and goals of the DEP and DPR submission, daylighting of Tibbetts Brook and construction of a greenway between Hester and Pierre's Mill Pond, then Cortland Park and West 230th Street, Bronx. That is the subject of a conceptual review of the New York City Public Design Commission on July 11th. Be it further resolved that Bronx Community Board 8 received regular updates from DPR and DEP on design changes to the joint daylighting Tibbetts Brook and Pro uh, Putnam Greenway project for the purpose of review and the consideration of new and separate resolutions pursuant to preliminary and final PDC review, as well as any agency from which they seek approval. Be it further resolved that Bronx Community Board 8 attaches a statement of design priorities and recommendations to this resolution, which may be updated by the consent of the board for consultation by DEP, DPR, and DOT in the ongoing design process and for future design modifications. So um, Madam Chair, this represents the work of the um, Parks and Recreation Committee and Environment and Sanitation Committee for this year. But as these long, as the long whereas clauses state, um, it also represents um, over a decade worth of, in fact, going on 20 years worth of community board engagement with the Putnam Trail and with Daylight. And for that reason, this is a really special day, a really exciting um, moment for our board. And also we did our best to craft a really smart resolution that we think gives us or meets three really proper objectives. First really was determining the proper lane through which to give our constructive feedback. Um, and that lane is the Public Design Commission. Under the city charter, the Public Design Commission is to consult or receive the recommendations and contributions and feedback from community boards. So when the project is submitted to Public Design Commission, that is our signal to act. And we have kept the resolution firmly with, please mute, firmly within 
the PDC framework because that is the city charter approved lane for speaking on this project at this point. Um, it is narrow, it is simple, and it is based on our city charter role, parallel, uh, sub, uh, subsequent to Euler, for how to engage the city of New York and the agencies on what they're doing. So I, I need to stress that. It also establishes important leverage that I'm gonna go into a little bit more. And that has been our objective from the get-go. Um, there has been multiple outreach to community organizations. And again, I need to stress that the community board is, has a separate and distinct and unique and special re responsibility. And our goal was to maximize that role and that leverage with this resolution, which we think it does. And furthermore, it gives the board flexibility upon further review to add and change the recommendations made here. Okay, now let me go for a little bit further now. Doug therefore produces a flexibility and adaptability in the board. So I just would like to take chair's privilege and speak further on the be it resolves. Okay, if you could follow me to the bottom of this page. Um, the Bronx Community Board 8 supports concept we really need to silence. Thank you. Supports concept and goals. Okay, this is appropriate for conceptual approval because we are approving a concept. And again, we are traveling within the proper lane of the PDC. You'll also note that this is a joint DEP and DPR submission. And I would call attention to all the resolutions, but particularly the resolution of February 13th, 2018, at which point it was resolved by Community Board 8 that DEP collaborate with the Department of Parks and Recreation to treat the daylighting of Tibbetts Brook inside and outside of Van Cortlandt Park as a critical green infrastructure project. That is that the two agencies would be working together. So they have pursued that. This is what we called for. This is what they delivered. This resolution was approved in 2018 under the chair, Rosemary Ginty. It's a great statement of the conjoined project. So it had been presented as conjoined in 2018 and the board approved it as conjoined to be conjoined in 2018. Now, let me go on to the be it further resolved. Now, this has to do about the special role we play with respect to the Public Design Commission. Now, you also see in the resolution that the Tibbetts Advisory Group had regular updates and invitations from community organizations, walk through, meeting. Okay, so um, that is fine, but that is not the community board's special contribution. The community board's special contribution is granular, tough-minded give and take. Okay, um, and what that means is that we need to be involved in the beginning about what this will take shape, okay? Um, we have a golden opportunity here because under conceptual review, PDC does not need to have any comments. I need to stress that there will no vote be taken. This is discussion within committee. PDC and DEP have said to us, that, and I quote here, your resolution is welcome and will be shared with the committee. DEP writes, PDC is an important stakeholder at city projects. We want to ensure that we are engaging them early on. PDC conceptual level reviews are managed at the committee level. There's no vote. They do not take testimony, but they would still welcome CBH resolution and will circulate it among commissioners. We heard loud and clear that a, a number of board members 
complained, frankly, that the committees, the board was not sufficiently engaged. We have delivered engagement. We are first among community organizations. We are a city agency, after all, in presenting our recommendations up front at the first instance. To do it now is to give the board maximum leverage. This is completely in the interest of the board. And I have no act, no personal stake in this because I am no longer chair of ENS. And I give this only to establish the bargaining position of the board that can be changed. But to be a conceptual and to be given this courtesy is a brilliant opportunity that should not be squandered. Lastly, the be it further resolved, the statement of design priorities and recommendations. It is really important that they hear exactly what the community board does. And that is to give detailed feedback. There are things that not everybody likes about daylighting and the greenway. This is the beginning of recommendations for priorities and recommendations for change. I need to stress that this is going to be a national model for how to build a greenway because it does incorporate daylighting, uh, climate change, and resilience measures that make this the first, the largest in the city of New York. We are really at the beginning of a design change at which greenways are now being given natural resources and being made environmentally productive. There are no greenways that can claim this. There is park throughout, this is parkland. And at no point is it only a sidewalk. At no point is it only a sidewalk. From Van Cortland Park, in which this continues the Putnam Trail, okay, to 230th Street, there is green space, there is a stream that was meant to flow there by nature. This is a restoration. And there are still things we want from our parks. My final comment is that the design priorities and recommendations, especially under Park and Greenway, is the place for the community board to say, we want more park, we want less this, we want more that. And if we, if Ramdas and I, committee was not exhaustive. We invite your comments and additions. We need to make sure that PDC hears firsthand from our community board. I am very excited, worked very hard to obtain this opening for the community board to speak to the Public Design Commission. I humbly ask for your support of a game-changing project that will bring green space recreation and a green way to our beautiful district. Thank you, Bob. Um, thank you, and we appreciate your passion because the, your two committees, ENS and Parks, have been collaborating for years on this. Um, Ramdot, as um, as co-sponsor, I'd like to give you an opportunity to speak to your resolution. Thank you so much. And you know, it was such a great privilege working with Bob. Uh, Fanuzi on this um, for this project this year and I just want to highlight and talk to how this is actually going to impact our parks. Um, so first things first, the, the project is fully funded. It is fully funded and as we know when it comes to parks budget they don't have a capital, capital budget. Um, so when they want capital projects done it has to come to the community board or get done through um, the council member's office. So I just want to remind you, um, during the superstorms, Van Cortlandt Park actually flooded. Um, and it impacted Van Cortlandt Park greatly. Um, they lost uh, machinery. Uh, they lost you know, things that they need to maintain the park um, for day-to-day -day maintenance. Um, and this project will help, since it's fully funded, it will help ensure that no stormwater damage will impact the park. It fully funds infrastructure 
that will help redirect stormwater um, away from Van Cortlandt Park and help redesign the Van Cortlandt Park Lake. And I live in Kingsbridge. I live not too far from where this project is proposed. And as if you know the area, the area doesn't necessarily have that many green space. It's more retail, it's more buildings, and this is going to be a perfect opportunity to bring some green to the area. Um, this is an environmental issue. This is also, a, I see it as a racial justice um, for the area, bringing more green space down um, the hill. Um, the plan was submitted to PDC, and there was some talk about it's just, it's a sidewalk. And that's not, it's not just a sidewalk. It includes bridges, it includes greenery, it includes um, the rerouting of the stream. And at, I think at exec, um, it was asked about parks definition of a greenway. What does parks, the parks department actually define as a greenway? And I just wanted to read you um, what parks sent us. So park, um, according to parks department, parks does not have a strict definition of a greenway particularly because these facilities change jurisdiction as they can travel from New York City parkland to state parkland, go on street or go to other privately owned waterfront sites. Our definition can be different from DOT or other agencies definition. In general though, parks would consider a linear multi-use path that exists inside New York City parkland and extends to an ad adjacent property, a greenway. So as you can see, parks has many definitions of what um, a greenway can be. Um, it's not defined in any way, shape, or form. And I'm asking the board as well, um, as, a, as a resident living here in Kingsbridge, to vote in favor of this resolution and make sure that this area gets much needed green space um, and make sure that our park, Van Cortlandt Park, is not affected year to year through more storms and damages from storms. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you, Ram Dot. Um, uh, Deb, your hand is up. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I wanted to um, first start with a, a friendly amendment um, in, in the parks section. Um, if you could scroll down, um, number eight. Okay. Ms. Kira there. What page is that? Is that the next page? page I think so. Two. I think it's page two. Oh, you said the park section, right? So that'll be the page park section. That'll be page down, three. Peter, please. Can, scroll down. Know, is anybody scrolling? Oh, there we go. Scroll down, please. Yep, keep going. Scroll down. Down, the other way. Down. The other, the other down. down. <laughs> yeah. It starts where it says parks and greenway. Yeah, the so that's the environment and water. So not that part. Here, so next page. Yeah. Keep going. Yep. Excuse me. Nope. Go up. Yeah. Uh, keep going. Roman Newman. Sorry, my my mouse is not working, so I'm using the arrows. Okay, stop Roman right there. Numeral. Stop right there. Yeah. Okay. See, so where it says number eight, um, utilize permeable asphalt on the Putnam Greenway wherever feasible. If you could add within personnel budget constraints. I know that there was um, some discussion within the committee and the concerns from Van Cortlandt Park about maintenance. But we wanted to both have the permeable asphalt, but also kind of uh, acknowledge that um, there may be budget constraints to, to maintain it. I, I accept that. And everyone, um, the reason for permeable asphalt is because this is a green infrastructure project <laughs> and they are required by DEC uh, consent order to produce um, a certain number of acres of green infrastructure and permeable asphalt is categorized as green infrastructure, even though it's not green, the fact that it's permeable makes it GI. That's why that's important. I also accept the friendly amendment as well. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ramba. And I just wanna say a few words in support of this resolution. Um, I just wanna want to strongly encourage the board to vote tonight in support of it. Um, it's the accumulation of many months and years of collaboration with the public and local nonprofit partners, as both Bob and Ram Dot have said. Um, with a project of this scale there that has this many agencies involved, it would have been very easy for the community board to be given a backseat. 
but thanks to the hard work of the ENS and parks committees and the board as a whole, and I got to call out the technical expertise of uh, BCEQ, we are in a position to provide specific, thoroughly considered, publicly vetted comments to PDC at the beginning of their process instead of at the end when most of decision, the decision making is complete. For those of us who have watched public sentiment get sidelined by DEP in the past when it comes to Jerome Park Reservoir issues, this level of dialogue is not to be taken lightly. Um, this resolution, which I won't go into detail um, on what is awesome about it because it's long and very awesome, um, has been discussed by both committees at length and contains thorough lists of recommendations for both the daylighting project and the Greenway now and priorities for both of these projects moving forward over the summer and into the next year. Um, at the committee level, some members of the board expressed concerns that we should not proceed with the resolution because the purchase of the land is not complete. While it may be true that the purchase of the land is not finalized, the work to create the design is already underway um, by the city and to impose a delay on ourselves until every last T is crossed would mean that the community board would be badly sidelined. Um, CSX may be selling the land, but this train is leaving the station and community board eight needs to be on it. Um, I urge you to look at the specific re re recommendations in this resolution. Um, PDC has asked us for these recommendations. If you agree with them, um, support them tonight. Um, I also just want to say really quickly that I have the pleasure of being a longtime member of both of these committees. And I want to big, give a big thanks to Ram Dot for stepping into the vacancy this year to be parks chair. Um, he did an amazing job um, with a very busy committee. And to Bob Panuzzi, you've always been someone I've modeled my own meetings after because you bring both activism and information and leadership to every committee meeting, which is a real endeavor. Um, you've been a real ally for those of us around the Jerome Park Reservoir. So thank you so much for your service uh, as chair of ENS. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Um, moving along, uh, David. Uh, yes, could you scroll up to the very first uh, whereas? I just have two uh, friendly amendments. <laughs> What a time for a mass to go out. Yeah. Where am I? Okay. Um, uh, sorry, it, it was page three earlier. What, what is the, what David, are you looking David, for? The David, first David. whereas, oh, right there, right okay. there, right there. All right, all right. Um, uh, it just, uh, I, I thought it was correct in the last one. Um, it's not a joint, department and department, but rather the department and the department are jointly submitting. I accept that. Thank you, David. Okay. okay. And then the other thing, uh, um, uh, uh, Chair Fanuzzi asked me to uh, submit this um, also as a friendly amendment, um, regard, and let me just give it, um, to, uh, to add at the very, very end, um, uh, the, therefore be it resolved, uh, uh, that uh, they complete the Greenway, uh, daylighting concept below 225th Street to the Harlem River um, to integrate uh, with the Harlem River Greenway as a complete uh, beltway to Long Island Sound and Westchester. David, can we say Harlem River Greenway to include 225th Street? I thought that's where you were going to go with that. Um, again, could you bring me back to the text? I can't see it. Okay, that's fine. To complete. Yeah the greenway and daylighting concept below 225th Street to down to the Harlem River to integrate with the Harlem River Greenway okay. as, as a complete beltway to Long Island Sound and Westchester. Um, I'm not sure, can we stop at the Harlem River? And is this under Park and Greenway Design Priorities Recommendations? I'm, I'm getting confused about where you want this as it uh, be it further resolved. This is what um, we talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, but uh, David, I would really love to make that a recommendation um, because it's the community board has never heard of the Beltway, the Long Island Sound. We've never discussed this. Um, I'm trying to keep this within what they showed us, okay? Um, and because we are giving a, an opinion to Public Design Commission only, because that fell outside the presentation. Um, if you would like to add further stuff, you would like to see 
I actually created the bucket called recommendations for further modification. Um, because I really want to keep the Be It Further Resolves a commentary on what we saw. Um, and then further on the recommendations, which will be approved by the board, would use the recommendation to further the work after 230th to incorporate 225th and connect to the Harlem River Greenway. Um, is, is that the, the goal of your addition? Well, no, this is what we discussed last week was to plant the seed with them that we want this project to go all the way down to the Harlem River and not end at 230. And that's why we wanna do it here in our resolution and not in the laundry list of recommendations. Um, Ramdad, I'm not quite comfortable with that because again, I'm trying to keep that. I really believe in it. Um, obviously the Carlin River Greenway link is, is essential. Um, the community board just hasn't had the information about this. I would feel like we were springing something on the community board that they had no knowledge of the Randall's Island connection, the Harlem River Greenway. Um, and that's news to many of us in this room. But it's not news to the members of the committee because we discussed it when I brought up this exact language a week ago. Well, I thought you were making it a recommendation. Um, with no, you asked me to add it as a friendly amendment to the resolution. Yeah, and that, the, I'm sorry, the recommendations are part of the resolution. This is not a friendly amendment. Clearly. Bob, are you rejecting it as a friendly re amendment? I would like to keep the be it further resolved um, to what we saw, David, and um, because I think that's really what the community gave us impact on. Um, that's what the, I mean, information about, um, that's what they will be seeing. Um, and I think there is room for further information and presentations on the subject you're talking about, including the Harlem River Greenway. Um, I think the important thing is actually um, to engage DCP, I'm sorry, uh, DEP and DPR on extending the Greenway to 225th so we can reach Fordham Landing. I mean, I would like to just continue south at this point. Um, so this is a design, um, a public design project and I would like to hold that for um, a recommendation or a future meeting because I don't think the community board is sufficiently informed about what you're asking us to do. And I apologize if I thought that was going to be in a be it further resolved. I thought it was going to be a recommendation. Okay. okay so so you are rejecting your you both are rejecting it as a friendly amendment. Ramdot, right. do you feel the way I do? Yes, um, and I just want to point you, you know, I'll read the language from number seven. It says, study the Tibbetts Brook Putnam Greenway as a transportation spine, including the extension of the Empire State Trail from Van Cortland Park to 230th Street and southbound connections to the Harlem River Greenway. So we kind of have that recommendation already there. Uh, I wouldn't want to change the uh, uh, resolve clause either. And I, I would be happy to um, see number seven, David, study the Tibbetts Brook Putnam Greenway at, at, with Ram Dat Red. And um, that is the place where we'll be happy to include um, Harlem River Greenway, the um, South Bronx Greenway, and Randall's Island. I will be happy to include that there. I just don't feel that the community board has been informed about this as either a priority as or as a be it further result. Okay, as the hour is getting late, if it's okay, may I move on with the hands? I'd like to make a motion to amend with that what David's language is um, to amend. No, never mind. I withdraw the motion. It's fine. Okay. Are we good here? Yep. Okay, we're good. Next hand is Bob Bender. Yeah, I'll be brief. I know uh, we're spending a lot of time on this issue, but it's also enormously important if uh, if I'm not wrong, and Bob, you'll correct me if I am, this is the biggest green infrastructure project in the city of New York right now. That is correct. It is. Um, and so it is of, it is of uh, great importance. Uh, I want to make sure everybody is clear on the fact that 
we're talking a lot about south of Van Cortland Park, but part of this project is in Van Cortland Park. It's, it means improvements in Van Cortland Park, and it has the support of the Van Cortland Park Alliance. And I, I think it's important for uh, who have been involved in this project along with DEP. And I think it's important for everybody to be aware of that, uh, of that support. Uh, I, I want to um, repeat something that Ramdat said. Uh, this will extend the park farther south into Kingsbridge, which is an underserved community when it comes to green space. Uh, and it is uh, both an economic and environmental justice issue, I believe. So uh, that was an important point that Ramdat brought up. Uh, last thing I want to say is that uh, it's important to vote on this tonight because this project is moving forward. We don't meet again until September, three months from now. Uh, we don't want to let the opportunity to vote on this very important project tonight pass us by. And last thing I will say is uh, I've already praised Ram Dot's leadership on the Parks Committee. I want to thank Bob Finuzzi. This was his second tour as chair of the Environment and Sanitation Committee, uh, and he has performed a valuable service to us. Uh, so uh, I thank you, Ramdat, and I thank you, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Um, I it it uh, Rosemary. Oh, good. Thank you. So in, uh, in all the uh, lengthy discussion uh, in a democracy, it's always good to have opposing points of view, don't you think? Uh, and I'm going to be an opposing point of view for a narrow aspect of this resolution. And I focus only on the following words. Commu Bronx Community Board 8 supports the concept and goals of the DPR submission. That is the only part that I have an objection to. I am, have no argument with the daylighting. I have no argument with the engineering that Hazen and Sawyer's, I have no argument with that. It is the parks piece of this that I object to and will not, if this remains in the resolution, I will not vote for the resolution because I feel so strongly that the parks part of this has been diminished and overlooked and we can do better. Um, uh, we, um, where we should have a conceptual park design, we do not. Uh, I have heard it said, a number of people have said it's, it, it's more than a sidewalk. No, it isn't, it's a sidewalk. I, ask, I hope everybody on this board can see the presentation. It's a sidewalk. That is all they gave us. Uh, the original Euler, uh, was very extensive, the entire width of the um, uh, CSX was going to be uh, this park, walkway, bike lane, seating, uh, uh, lighting, landscaping on both sides. It was the full, whether it would be 30, 40, 50, 60 feet wide, the full thing. We have a sidewalk. Uh, the, the also, it was uh, a called for linking it, it to our uh, uh, community uh, on, uh, on both sides of, of the highway. I mean, the Major Deegan splits us. It, it's the kind of thing we don't always notice, but it has split our community in half. Um, it, it, it was to link our retail community at 230th, 234th, and 238th. Those three streets cross the Deegan. Those three streets are commercial, retail commercial. Um, uh, in, it, it, instead, they have given us or suggested 239th Street, which is the end, the backyard of abandoned visitation and a residential street. It does not go the other side of, of the highway. Uh, there's no commercial on that street. They give us verbaline, which is nothing more than an exit from a garage. And that also doesn't go the other side of the highway. The possibility for imagination for bringing this park into both sides of the highway and into our commercial retail neighborhood had all sorts of possibilities. It, 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 and, and it's not here. It is not here. It's not shown here. Um, it, the original uh, promise uh, was for a full park. Uh, the High Line of the Bronx, it was CSX. 
uh, with thoughtful connections to our commercial community, east, east side and west side of the Major Deegan. It has not been offered here. The area shown is a sidewalk with no imagination, no vision, and no thought. The park has become an inconvenient afterthought. That's what is so troubling about this proposal. It is, it, it's as though the park got in the way. And again, I am not against anything with the daylighting or the DEP portion, but we can do better with the park. Um, yes, it's important that there be green down here. Yes, I understand the important issue for the community. That's exactly why we have to do better than this. We have to do better than this. Uh, so um, again, the words in the proposed resolution uh, Brown's Community Board 8 supports the concept and goals of the DPR submission. Those are the words that I object to. And uh, just um, uh, one thought on the collaboration uh, and the process. I wasn't going to address process at all here. But I have to tell you, this has not been uh, a, a fully um, um, a outward transparent process for the Community Board. We have had two meetings on this, December and May. That is it. That is the extent of the outreach of these two agencies Point to this community board. Falsehood. Excuse Three me, meetings. I'm sorry, still speaking, still speaking, Point still speaking. Point of order, it's a falsehood, three meetings. That's, a, that's, that's, up, to, that's up to the uh, chair. Okay. Chair, you have... Uh, uh, okay, there were meetings for years on this topic. This but there year, not there two were meetings, several there meetings. Three meetings. Okay, there were three. And um, just correcting the record is all. I apologize for the interruption. Well, the, if, apology well, accepted. Now, may I continue, Madam Chair? Continue. There have been two meetings on this, two joint meetings of parks and ENS, two, one in December, and what that is it. It is, it has not been, this project has been going on for two and a half years. The, uh, the um, uh, staff person from DEP uh, in the first uh, uh, meeting said that they started this two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago, it changed from all park to then uh, the, the very serious um, uh, design for uh, uh, daylighting coming out of Van Cortland Park, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago, we saw it. We had two meetings on this. So um, uh, it, 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 I think that's a, that is an important fact uh, to know. Now, I will. It, a lot of talk has gone on. I will. I will stop at that. Um, I cannot vote for the parks portion of this resolution. We can do better. We deserve better, and the process could have been better. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, I, I need to correct chair, former Chair Rosemary's uh, Ginty's assertion uh, of two meetings. There were three meetings. Um, two and a half years ago, um, Rosemary Ginty was chair when Parks and DEP actually came to us with this collaboration. So there were no meetings on this until 2021 to 2022 under Chair Laura Spolter. So, this year, the engagement has been robust. Um, those are my only, um, I, I often, I invite and I welcome um, Rosemary Ginty's comments about we can do better. And that is what engagement with Public Design Commission is for. And that's what our priorities state about East-West equity. Um, and that is what our procedure will be going forward. There is no reason to remain silent when you had the chance to make changes. Thank you. Madam Chair, may I also add something? Yes, go ahead. Um, so when it came to the process, uh, the community board was actually, I was on these Tibet advisory group meetings as well. And so was uh, Bob Fanuzzi. We also did a tour, um, a walkthrough of the potential sites. Um, so I believe the community board was very involved. Um, I was definitely very involved um, in this, this process this year. 
Uh, ma yeah. ma yeah. Madam, Madam Chair, if you are going to allow people to debate, then I have a right to debate also. No, I, I, I allow them think... because they're the sponsors of it, but I'd like to move on because it's already uh, getting late, 9.30, and I, I'd like to move on. So I'm and going... I, well, I, I, I didn't have mean to, to have a, a debate. I didn't mean to have a debate, but since they sponsored it, I did give them an opportunity to make a correction. Camelia, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. If I may, Laura, and please don't hate me. But can I ask Rosemary very specific and shortly? Rosemary, is there like a specific sequence of wording that would make you feel comfortable if eliminating or like specific and short, please, Rosemary? She's not in the position to make a change. Point of okay, order. okay. You have okay, to ask you. the you have to okay. ask the people who moved the resolution. No, no, just I, I wasn't sure if I understood correctly, uh, uh Robert. So just in, in that spirit, I was asking. But uh I don't want to put forward a series of uh, sort of answers to, to Rosemary because I very much, again, I was also part of the advisory group. Uh, I was interested in this project for, for where, since day one of joining the board and actually with the year prior in connection to the Marble Hill portion that, that David uh, raised. And I very much disagree with um, uh, the way that the process was described. I very much disagree with um, the, the sort of, how the city's uh, approach to us was interpreted in a very negative light here. Um, and uh, I am absolutely personally impressed with how far the city uh, proceeded in years of COVID, in years of COVID with a project that is on land that the city does not own, on uh, that nego they, they negotiated for years and years, a project of very significant technical complexity. Um, I mean, and they come after three years of COVID with a project fully funded with a design phase uh, 1.0 and we, uh, we want perfection? No, I'm applauding the city of, of, of the progress they were able to to, to make and, and present to us. I applaud the city for organizing a four hour tours uh, where, where so many of us attended and it was uh, extremely uh, open, transparent, revealing and where we were free to ask all the possible questions we were able to ask. And I applaud Community Board Aid under uh, Bob Fanuzzi's leadership that put this thing uh, together. I personally may not even agree with every single word that they put there, but I definitely see the positive, constructive intent, the, the need and the, the, want, the drive to be engaged and an active partner at the table. And Rosemary and also David, because I remember you like raising these issues with, you know, quote unquote, the sidewalk and all that. You are right, that is a risk. But I also heard even in the, in the, environmental sanitation meeting or when DEP was there presenting, I heard them shifting in the way that they were understanding the project right there, yeah. live. Yeah. They said, oh yes, we should consider meandering. Oh yes, we should consider the big trees there. there. Oh yes, we should consider like elevating. Oh yes, we should consider uh, drainage. Oh, I mean, all these things that were happening literally in front of our eyes, you could hear them thinking, out loud with us. So I will be very happy and proud to, pre to, to support uh, this um, resolution. We should not make, how to say, the good, the, the, the best enemy of the better, or I don't know what, you, you, know, you know what I'm trying to say. The the there will be, yes, yes, there will be 25 versions of the, of the design. We saw the version 1.0, there will be version 1.0. In, in five years from now, if we are lucky to, to see this project during, uh, you know, the next uh, two decades of our lives. So thank you both for your work. Also, thank you for reaching out to me. I would have never ever dreamt of, of uh, even considering this position. And I know that I will count on, on your help to move everything um, forward positively and with your, and Karen's and everyone's technical expertise. So just wanted to say all these things. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Camille. Uh, Dan. Uh, uh, Laura, my hand was up before. I'm sorry, you've spoken once. No, I did not. I only offered amendments to friendly amendments. I did Dan, not comment. Uh, you have the floor. I will circle back. Dan. So, 
So, Bob and Rams, I don't want to thank you for answering my offline questions re regarding status of the application. I do appreciate that. Um, and thank you for announcing it tonight where we were. Um, with regards to tonight, and, uh, you know, one, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm in full support of this project. You know, the, 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 um, both the DEP part, um, the, the, and, and the park concept. I mean, we've been doing this for years. Uh, that being said, I want to first start kind of like process where we're at. I think the urgency uh, of this is being a little bit overstated. This project is moving forward. Um, and whether we say something or not, you know, it, it's going to move forward. Um, that being said, I do think we should say something at this part of the plan, knowing that, you know, when we do come to preliminary review, um, the agencies will need something from us. They will need a resolution. So, so frankly, it's smart for them to engage us early on rather than getting caught up a little bit later. Um, with regards to the project, I think DEP did an amazing job in concepting the, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the, the channel. I think they did a great job with the design, the concept, where things were going. They put a lot of thought into connections, and we can clearly see how the daylighting project is going to work. When it came to the parks part of it, I, I think that's where a lot of the questions I saw at the meetings were um, that we had at the board. And, and I had like a lot of specific questions, and, and I think what we're lacking here is just uh, an overall concept of, of the park itself. And I think we would be remiss not to tell the agency that in, in some manner to say that there are park features lacking that we would like to see brought out. Um, and, and while I know you have the attachment, I would say you would need a little bit strengthening language to incorporate that, that, that guideline. I had mentioned it last week at, at exact. Totally open to that. So uh, again, it's something you might want to put in there, just a very brief statement. The, the, the guideline, which is incorporated herein, make, attaching it to the resolution, making it a part thereof, you, you, you might want to put in. But again, some statement dealing with the lack of park features. I know for me, what I would really like to see, and I brought it up when it came to even the bridges, what material is going to be used. I want to see, and, and I know Bob Bender mentioned it, the, the, the width of the, of the lane itself. You know, is it going to be a minimum of eight feet? What's going to be there? Where is it flowing? You know, this should be something similar to, quite frankly, the, the Putnam Railway in the park that starts at the lake, where you have yeah. a use of, you know, pedestrians, bicyclists, runners, everybody. And I would like to see that same concept here. And I think it's lacking okay. in, in what we've seen right now. And again, if a very brief statement can be said to, to PDC, we, we, we need to see more, more of the park features brought okay. out. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think that would be helpful. Ramdot, I would um, like to... Point of order. Why you were recognized? Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Well, you know what? Uh, we're considering we're considering whether what Dan suggested is a I friendly think, amendment. So I, I, I should have said, do yeah, you right. accept these uh, uh, contributions as a friendly amendment? Thank I you. Do. Uh, Ram I do. I do as well. Yeah, turn the key, Ramdat. I think that's fantastic. Um, so I'm going to propose a be it for no one result. recognized. Hmm? You have you 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 can answer yes, Venusi. Okay, um, so there then Dan, there is a be it further resolved a, a, a third be it further resolved. Is that correct? So and it would yeah or or just you, you, yeah you could do another be it resolved. You know just saying you know be it further again, resolved. Um, the community that, board recognizes a lack of park features within the conceptual plan that we we need to be brought out. Okay, um, recognize th there is a third point. Okay. Um, and, and I know I'm racing up, but there's a third point. I just want to make an I'll end there on, uh, on this point. When we do come down to preliminary review, right, they, they do require yeah. a resolution. Correct. And I know you have this language in there saying that, you know, we're going to come back to it, but I think you need an affirmative statement saying that this resolution shall not be considered for the preliminary design phase at PDC. Correct. Uh, that's perfect. Um, thank you for that language. Another. Um, friendly, and I accept that. And I'll, I'll you. end and there. I'll, uh, I accept Dan. as Thank well. You. Thank you, Dan. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. I'm sorry right. for jumping um, ahead because those are great suggestions. Madam you go, uh, Bob, you're going to send that language to the office? Yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because so we be it further resolved that Community Board 8 recognizes an absence of park features in the, con in the plan presented and um, calls for um, increased parks engagement and design. Um, and should parks feature should be highlighted. Okay. Um, I will also say, Dan, that language again, 
about this does not constitute preliminary design. Um, this does not constitute the board's resolution for the preliminary review okay. at PDC. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, Chuck. Motion to close debate. Second. Second. Okay. No, my, right. my hand was up before that came up. A okay. motion has so been. Point my of hand was up wait, wait, wait. before. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Chuck, you're making a motion to call the question, if I'm correct? Correct. But it, okay. David's Can right. Please? David okay. is right. David. I withdraw the motion. This is going to go <laughs> up. No, 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 it's not. It's not. I think the end is near. Yes, it is. This won't, this won't take very long. I, I hope not, David. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll remind everybody, that this all sort of came about because, uh, Laura, you canceled our first meeting ever the night uh, we were supposed to meet up at K, uh, K H, uh, King Ridge Heights Community Center, which was the night of David, Ida. I have no recollection. Please get oh, on. come on, guys. I have no, no, no recollection. Uh, we're, we're in the get on with it. Folks, let's be civil. You know let's what? Be civil. Just, just let me finish. Thank God you did. We wouldn't have gotten home. But what that caused was, was the flooding of the Deegan. And that's why this is a critical project and why I generally support it. The problem I've got with it is that it's going to end up being, as it is designed now, like the, um, the LA River spillways that we see in uh, police chase movies. My concern about this is we will have a good way to do what we must do to remove the water that's flowing down from the pond, from Tibbetts Lake, Tibbetts Brook, et cetera, et cetera, the whole watershed. Okay. All I'm getting at is it is not uh, sufficient, as Dan was bringing up, it yeah. is just simply not sufficiently park-like. I encourage everybody to go up to downtown Yonkers and see what a daylighting project could be. And that's what I hope this will become. We must do this project, but we must do it the right way. That I, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Um, my hand was up. It doesn't seem now. I'm going to relinquish the chair for a one minute statement, please, to, to Bob Bender temporarily, maybe not temporarily. Uh, I just want to say, reiterate that this project is fully approved by the Van Cortlandt Park Alliance. Um, and it is our job to comment now and later and much later at every juncture of this process. And that the issues with the original ULERP where the parks department threw out certain um, sites leading onto Broadway, what they've brought out now is that for ADA reasons, some of those sites are impossible. You would need a huge elevator uh, and so that's why they're examining all different sites based on uh, feasibility uh, and, you know, and, and so on. So I support this project. I have supported this for years. When I was chair in the 90s of ENS, um, this, this project came before us from DEP and it has bloomed. And I, uh, I agree that it is time to vote. If there is no other hands up, um, I think we should call the question. Okay, Bob Ramdot, and uh, the take a vote. Okay, second. Uh, I, I relinquish the chair back to you, Madam oh, Chair. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, we're, we're voting on this resolution. Would you please raise your hand if you oppose the resolution? Oppose. I see Rosemary and David. I don't see any other hands. Is there anyone abstaining? Abstaining. Ed Green and Chuck. And Sylvia. Okay, Sylvia, I didn't see that. I still don't see that. But I'm, now, now I see it. Okay, Sylvia, Chuck, Ed, abstaining. abstaining. Okay, the motion passes and we can move on with our um, agenda. Okay, if I could find my agenda, what's the next committee? Okay, um, public, safety. Public, public safety. Ed, you're on. 
All right. Okay. So public safety committee, we have four resolutions for uh, liquor license, three for liquor license renewals, one for a new application for a liquor license. They're all for full liquor licenses. Uh, the first one renewal is for Madison's located at 5686 Riverdale Avenue. Uh, the second renewal is for Blissful Creations which is located at 6661 Broadway. And the third is for a renewal for the last stop located at 5977 Broadway. And the new application is for uh, La Villa restaurant located, which will be located at 240 West 231st Street. And in La Villa's case, they, uh, the applicants signed a 2 a.m. closing agreement, agreeing to close their establishment no later than 2 a.m. The 50th precinct was not um, available at our meeting due to the event uh, they had at the park with the Philharmonic, but they emailed us in advance stating that they had no issues of any, uh, they were unaware of any notable disturbances or complaints at the locations of any of these establishments. And uh, the Public Safety Committee voted to unanimously approve all four of these applications. And we did, we did receive the 2 a.m. agreement. Um, so uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I would like to, uh, if unless there's any objections from anybody, I'd like to vote, uh, take a vote on this as a, a collective for all four. Perfect. Fred, um, may I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, we never voted on your May resolution um, because the the May board meeting happened before your committee meeting. So we need to also vote on Estrelita Poblana and the resolution okay. is here in the packet. Okay, so I, I'll just, um, that one was uh, Estrelita Poblana, Takara Express, located at 5975 Broadway. And they also signed a 2 a.m. closing agreement and the 50th precinct were uh, stated they were unaware of any uh, well prior uh, disturbances at the location because it is a new application and the uh, the uh, committee uh, voted unanimously to approve that so i guess we just add that in and uh, yeah sure but. okay so is there any opposition to uh we're doing this as a set to these liquor license renewals is there any abstentions? Um, then it unanimously passes. And um, thank you, Ed. Thank you. Okay. So, so uh, also um, at our meeting on the fourteenth, we had a discussion of uh, increase in local crime and what the role of the public safety committee has in addressing this issue. Um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, you know. CompStat indications of rising crime, uh, increasing noise complaints surrounding the parks and businesses operating as nightclubs and marijuana trucks. And so we're getting, we're getting, we're getting a lot of uh, stuff we haven't seen in, in, in higher doses of crime in this area. And it's been kind of concerning. And one of my hopes is, you know, which was discussed at, at this meeting is that over the summer, um, perhaps we can find a way to uh, uh, improve our, our outreach um, to, to, to engage the community a little better to, to show up at our public safety meetings. I don't know how we do this via social media. It's something I want to reach out to, to, the, to the board and to you, Laura, to figure out how we can increase our attendance. Um, uh, you know, so we, have, we can hear more from the constituents of our elected officials who need to hear some of the uh, complaints that they have about rising crime and and because it's it's a bad trend at this point um we also discussed uh the uh potential public safety committee hybrid meetings and um at this point where um again we don't have any confirmation from the 50th precinct as to whether we're even allowed to um bring video uh, recording equipment in there. So I know that's something that you reached out to Captain Gervin. I'm pretty sure we have not received a response. We need to get that from the higher ups. Um, so that's something also that uh, I need to get some word on soon because we wanna move forward with that. 
and uh, take a formal vote as a committee, whether we choose to do that or not. And um, anyway, that that's about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss the uh, the Zoom, and uh, I'll, I'll miss uh, I'll miss Marty. I love your screen, your black and white screen. It looks like you're in an Ingmar Bergman film. So I'll I'll miss a lot of this stuff. But uh, I see and see everybody in September at the meetings. I guess in person. Thank, Thank you. Um, uh, 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 Camelia, you, you have a comment for Ed? Uh, yes, I do, Laura. Uh, thanks, Ed. Um, I mean, maybe it's something I don't know, but I would be surprised after three years on this board that I, you know, it would be there. So just because I um, follow closely another committee or another community board in the Bronx uh, working with the 49th, actually, there are so much more activities involving the community um, uh, with the precinct directly. They have a 49th precinct community council with an active Facebook uh, website, uh, you know, platform, whatever group, and uh, many activities all the time. They have a clergy 49th precinct, whatever, whatever group that is meeting all the time with all representatives of faith being in touch with the community. They have a youth explorers group the 49th precinct with which I'm doing so many cleanups, planting, the little, like a lot of activities, but these are representative of the pre precinct going out there doing activities with the community. In three years that I was here, I don't think I ever heard of any such kind of groups that are directly uh, linking community uh, members with, with officers in the precinct. I think this would be a very positive development. I don't know, maybe I'm pushing the, too much here when we have a new captain and all that. What I'm saying is, please consider it in the future, suggesting it to them. Um, I don't know what to say. I would be happy to connect them with the 49th, but I think they all have sort of the same um, you know, processes in place, but especially the youth part, I found it to be tremendously um, useful actually, because it brings the officers closer to the community and the community closer to the officers. Um, and it's in all in a very positive environment and then and, and people build personal relationships that are then proven to be extremely useful. I just wanted to contribute that. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Maybe at some point over the summer, we, uh, I can pick your brain about some of the, some of the things you've seen that, that you feel might be effective. Thank you. Thank you. And um, traffic and transportation, Deb. Uh, David's hand is up. Yeah, I, I just want to say, Ed, don't we have a 50th Precinct Council and an Explorers group? Well, my issue is more of how do we engage the community with the Public Safety Committee rather than uh, the precinct itself. I mean, because we, you know, we kind of are recycling the same crowds back, and you know, and and we want to we want to expand our reach. That's really the know. NCRs, I believe, do a lot of outreach uh, to each community. They we they have meetings on Zoom in person. Uh, I attend the, the council meetings the second Thursday of every month. Yep. Um, there's a lot going on, but I I we have many committees to finish. It's going on ten o'clock. I'm going to ask everybody to be thoughtful about the time right now. And I'd like to move on to TNT. Okay. Thank you. There's a SAPO resolution. Laura, can I just say one thing? You know, um, just, just a fast thing that Go there's ahead. national night out with the precincts around the city. Oh, we always- the country and meet with the people. Yes, that's big. We oh, do that I every year. It's August 2nd. Thank you for reminding of, uh, we have that on our calendar. Okay. We're doing a lot of outreach uh, about that. We do that every single year. And I go every right. single year and I think right. I see you there. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reminding us about that. Um, we have a SAPO resolution in front of us. Deb? Yep, I have one resolution for tonight. It is a resolution to approve a street activity permit for a closed slip lane adjacent to DeWitt Clinton High School. And it goes from <laughs> Goulden Avenue to Sedgwick Avenue. And due to the timing of the meetings over the last six weeks, the committee approved this in May, on May 19th. And we've notified DOT that we supported the permit conditionally pending the approval of the resolution by the full board because the farmer's market actually already started a couple of weekends ago. 
Um, let me read the resolution aloud. Um, whereas the James Baldwin Outdoor Learning Center presented their plan in support of a partial sidewalk closure for a weekly farmer's market on the closed slip lane of Goulden Avenue at Sedgwick Avenue on Saturdays from, not, uh, from June 18th, 2022 through October 29th between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., including setup and breakdown time. Whereas this farmer's market has occurred at this location during the summer since August of 2020 without any community complaints. Whereas the JBOLC farmer's market is a valuable source for the Kingsbridge Heights community of locally grown fresh vegetables and fruit and features activities that include healthy cooking demos, story reading for children, poetry readings and music performances. Therefore be it resolved that the community board A traffic and transportation committee supports the street activity permit for the partial sidewalk closure of the closed slip lane off of Golden Avenue requested by the James Baldwin Outdoor Learning Center Farmers Market. And I have one just modification, which is it should say community board eight. It's not community board eight traffic and transportation committee. Okay, um, we'll have to change that here. Yep. Okay, easy enough. Um, I don't see any hands and I'd like to uh, ask if there's any opposition to the SAPO uh, application. No opposition, is there anyone abstaining? Okay, then it passes unanimously. Okay, uh, I've got um, one item of note at our meeting on the 22nd, DOT made a presentation um, regarding pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Manhattan College Parkway and Delafield Avenue. They will be installing a stop sign on the westbound Manhattan College Parkway and providing more structure to the intersection. They've been working very closely with Fieldston on this plan as a school safety improvement. Um, the board reached out to the Fieldston Property Association who did not provide any objections. And the plan has been posted on, the, uh, on Facebook, on the board's Facebook and is available on our website. Um, there was very low attendance at this committee meeting. Um, in fact, nobody from the community came um, to speak for or against this proposal. And so the TNT community decided not to vote on a resolution, but instead to gather feedback from the community over the summer and provide it to DOT. So um, with that end, DOT said they would be happy to receive it. So if you are interested, we please, please, please take a look at the plan um, and provide comments to the board office, which we will gather and give to DOT. So far, we've heard no complaints whatsoever, and uh, it looks like a, a good right. plan. It was also sent to Russ Park. Uh, oh, Friends of Russ Park. Yes, and all of them, and we asked for comments. Okay, thank you very much, Deb. Thank you for your service. Um, so just one last thing. I just want to refer you to the June TNT meeting uh, minutes for updates on the committee's work. And I would like to publicly thank all of the members of the committee for their hard work this year. The Traffic and Transportation Committee is a very busy committee with many uh, controversial agenda items. And the implementation of good transportation policy is one of the most direct local ways we can reduce congestion for cars, increase safety for pedestrians and cyclists and improve parking and fight climate change and air pollution. So as folks consider committees for next year, I urge you to consider this important committee. It was not always a pleasure to be the chair this year, but it was always a fight worth having. And I want to just thank the committee for taking that ride with me. You're all just wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, Deb. Um, moving on, uh, youth. Um, uh, I have a question. Okay. And my hand is up. I'm sorry, I didn't see it, Sylvia. Go okay, ahead. I, I'm not sure that that uh, Deb is the one that uh, knows about this, but I have to uh, again bring up the situation on West 235th Street. Uh, it is now uh, crept up to 236th Street, which is also closed. The only way that you can get to uh, Johnson Avenue now is through 239th Street. And I wonder who is working on 236th Street that now this is dug up also. It's not near a sewer. That can't be that kind of a situation. And there is no um, uh, notice to anyone in the neighborhood. We are living in a third world country here and it is not fair. Does the community board even know it? Um, yeah, Sylvia, as far as I know, it's Con Edison doing work there. Um, no, I'll that, that, that's on 235th Street, uh, Kira. They have uh, the metal plates all the way across uh, 235th Street and all the way down Oxford Avenue. Now there is somebody digging up 236th Street, not where the sewer is, where we usually have a problem, but further uh, east from there before Cambridge Avenue. And they have no flag people. They have no indication that the street is closed on either end. 
uh, except for the yellow uh, crime uh, uh, ribbons. And uh, it, it is a situation that really has to be taken care of. Sure, Sylvia, um, I wish you told me this yesterday when I saw you, I could have drove by and tried to figure it out. Um, I will look into I'm this surprised tomorrow. surprised you didn't also... see it because the street was closed. No, I was, it wasn't closed when I went there. But anyway, um, me and Deb will look into this and we'll get back to you uh, tomorrow. And the only one that mentioned the uh, 235th Street was uh, Bob Fernuzzi last uh, time, uh, uh, last week. And, and uh, he mentioned it just in passing that there was the uh, construction and that it was in the Riverdale Press that the um, key food is complaining because their customers can't get to the store. So I don't know, it, 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 it deals with, with DOT, it deals with DEP, it has uh, Con Edison, and now it has also economic development, and nobody seems to care in the community. All right, thank you. There has to be an answer to that. Thank you. Um, youth, uh, Julia. We didn't have a meeting in June. Have a great summer. See you in September. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> um, aging, Dan. Hi, Laura. Uh, there, we did not meet this month, so we do not have a report. I do want to thank all of my committee members uh, this year for all of their help. Um, and, you know, wish Lisa well. I'm sure she's going to do great next year. Um, she's done it before, and I'm really looking forward to what she's going to bring to this committee. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, budget? Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, Laura. Um, um, given the late hour, I just want to remind you that uh, my reports never take more than 45 seconds. Um, we received our budget uh, and, and uh, the office distributed uh, the 23 budget um, uh, last, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, uh, last Tuesday morning. I encourage everybody to go look at the budget uh, to see the details. Um, as usual, there are a lot of comments of great idea. Check with your your uh, elected officials. Um, and as uh, Council Member Radinowicz pointed out, um, he did uh, support us on a number of our priorities. And it, it looks more and more like we need to continue to pursue that uh, avenue to get what we want. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, economic development. I know that Nick is out of town. Um, um, why am I having a, a single Moses? Moment? Moses. <laughs> Moses. <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes. Moses. No. Thank you. No problem. I'll, I'll be very no quick, folks. Um, so uh, there was no meeting in June. Um, so our last meeting was on May 26th, though. Please refer to our minutes. Um, the community, just, community, uh, the committee thanks Rafael Roger from BOETC. Osvaldo Jimenez um, from the Business Initiatives Corporation of New York and J.R. Um, Dorsanville um, from Sobro for attending our meeting and providing valuable resources and information to our merchants in attendance to that meeting. I already mentioned the great dynamic of the uh, Merchant Awards, so that's great. Um, and so that's it. Um, have a great summer. Thanks, everybody. Um, look forward to uh, supporting for, into the new year and meeting again in the fall. So thank you. you thank you. Um, <laughs> Education libraries and cultural affairs. Uh, we did not have a meeting in June. Um, however, we did get a response from the School Construction Authority about the new school. And if it's all right, uh, Madam Chair, could I uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Merdler uh, to uh, join me in, in this report only because I will be working with him and um, uh, I'd like perfect, him to- perfect. Okay, Chuck. Oh, uh, Chuck, your Chuck, hand is muted. up. You're on. You're muted, Chuck. You're still muted, Chuck. I'm sorry. Land use will work with education and try and be as helpful as we can in connection with this matter. Good. So we'll work on setting something up as soon as possible. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else, Sylvia? Um. No. Um. We've spoken and uh, we'll go on from there. Good, okay. Um, environment and sanitation. 
and Bob. I want to thank everyone for their support. This is my last um, appearance as environment chair um, and the great work of our committee in making environmental issues so prominent in our board. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who participated in a very lively community board debate over a really pivotal um, project that we're involved in. And thank you all for um, your, your um, respect, your contributions, your opposition um, in making us um, a really vital committee and, and um, having produced a good resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Omar, Health Hospital, Social Services. Social services. Hi, good evening, everyone. There was no meeting in June, but at our May meeting, we had a budget discussion. So we will reconvene in September, where we hope to discuss about rat infestations and COVID-19, especially the rates and the vaccine rates. And we will also be discussing L equity. So we will see you guys in September. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, housing? Uh, Committee, uh, anybody to speak for the housing committee? Okay, moving on to Chuck and land use. Had a uh, discussion during the course of the past meeting concerning several matters that we've held up the further work on until we get the new committee put together. Let me be clear, if anybody is interested in becoming a member of the committee, please let me know. We are going to select those who can work and put it together. We're gonna to have a zoning issue serious one. We're going to have a very serious issue in connection with housing because of the new housing plan and its impact and the combination of the two in terms of how we are supposed to do it. So uh, please, if you want to join, we'd love to have you if you are prepared to work because we've all got to do it. Thank you and have a great summer. Thank you. Uh, Chuck. You want to report on the stag? Oh, now? I'm sorry. Yes, stag. Go stag. ahead. All right. Very quickly, uh, you probably those who've driven by know that for the last month uh, there was a stop work order. As a result, it was nice and quiet, and uh, nobody complained. Well, there were still some complaints about water accumulation and possible mosquitoes, dust, and some other things. But uh, now they're back to work and their complaints about the noise. Perhaps the people had it too good for the last month. Our vested interest, of course, is to get that building completed. It serves, doesn't serve us at all to have that uh, open construction site. Um, just to bring you up to date, we did meet again with, uh, with Stag. Um, and uh, the bad news for us, basically, was that he suddenly surprised us because they've added four additional stories to the building. Uh, I wonder, and I've uh, written that to Jay also, I wonder if there hadn't been a committee like us he shared us with, if the community would have realized it until after the building was already up. Uh, so I'm glad we have this committee. Finally, just let me note, uh, I was in contact with Jay today and uh, there, if you drive by, go by, there are two large pits that are being created. One is for the elevator uh, mechanisms, and the other is for a detention a tank, collect all the water that runs off the, uh, the building. And, uh, and so uh, they're moving forward. We've asked them for a, a plan, a projected plan, as to when various things will take place. Uh, it would be better for the community to know. Uh, just know that, um, uh, where's his answer here? Come on. The drilling is complete and rock chopping is anticipated to be complete by the end of next week. Right now, most of the rock exca excavation is related to trimming the perimeter. The elevator pit concrete was poured today. The concrete walls will go vertical from here. The tension tank excavation is complete. The material left in the hole will be excavated tomorrow. And the concrete slab for the tank is scheduled to be poured uh, on, on Friday. 
Over the next week, concrete footings for the building and garage walls will be poured to be followed by concrete walls. So that brings you up to date. Um, Madam Chair, if I may, what Marty has just commented on is an example of the kind of issues we're going to have in connection with the zoning and the housing issue. City's plan, if it does it, as the distinguished council person from the adjoining district pointed out in terms of the hearings that are coming up, is a concept of increasing the height of various existing buildings as well as future ones along the Henry Hudson Parkway, Riverdale Avenue, and perhaps other areas as a way of creating additional housing in the community. The same concepts have also been discussed in connection with the single family homes in various portions of this district rather running from Kingsbridge up to North Riverdale. So these are the kind of questions that are gonna come up uh, and it is why I asked, and I hope uh, there will be response from those people who have demonstrated over a period of time, they really wanna work at this. And I thank you. Let me also thank especially Marty, Rosemary, and Dan for their extra effort, and of course, David Goldman. Thank you. Okay, um, every year, we, the only committees left on our agenda tonight are the special committees. We have three special committees uh, for new members. Every June, we renew the special committees. The first one is the special committee on Hudson River Greenway. Uh, Bob Bender, you wanna speak to that? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes. Uh, the the uh, Special Committee on the Hudson River Greenway has been in existence since the Community Board passed a resolution in 2014 uh, advocating for an all-river greenway from Spite and Dival up to Ludlow and Yonkers. Uh, we meet only when there is a reason to meet. We met in May of this year, uh, and what has happened this year that is significant is that we increased our outreach to other communities. Uh, we are working with a group in Yonkers. Uh, we have support of Yonkers elected officials, including the Senate Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins. Uh, we are also working more carefully and more closely now with the New York City Greenways Coalition uh, in the hopes that the Hudson River Greenway will be a link in a citywide greenway that will go down into the South Bronx as well as into Manhattan. So uh, while we don't have the Greenway this year any more than we did the last, what is it now, eight years, we are getting closer, I believe, because uh, we now have a, a broader base of support for it. So for that reason, uh, I, I urge uh, that uh, the board vote to continue the special committee on the Hudson River Greenway for another year. Thank you. And thank you, Bob, for your work on that committee. Is there anyone opposed to renewing the special committee on the Hudson River Greenway? Is there anyone abstaining on the Hudson River Greenway? Madam Chair, I think I still have to under the conflict rules. Oh, okay, Chuck has abstained. And uh, therefore we're good. Good to go for another year, Bob. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. that's uh, the next one is the special committee on racial equity. Uh, Margaret is not here. Bob, why don't you uh, speak to that? Let's put that up. And while that's going up, I want to congratulate Scree on, um, they just sent in a June, a June uh, report, uh, an update. And in the report, there is a, um, a chart, a map that uh, shows all our capital projects for going several years back and where they are in the district. And it's a very informative and a, a terrific piece of work. Um, so I, I just wanna mention that. Um, okay, Bob, uh, you wanna to speak to the SCREE committee? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'm a member of the committee. Um, the uh, uh, committee was created in, in uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, as you said, Laura, it, um, we produced a, a long report this year uh, which contains that information. The other thing that this committee has been doing, I think very successfully, is working with the other committee chairs on equity issues and, and reminding other committee chairs that, um, or encouraging other committee chairs 
to make sure that equity issues are, uh, are uh, a determining factor in drawing up their budget priorities, both capital and expense priorities. And I have to say, uh, you know, we looked at um, the uh, priorities that were submitted this year, and uh, I'm, I'm very glad to report that uh, there, uh, there was a considerable effort to address equity issues, to make sure that some of the underserved parts of the community are represented in the, uh, in the budget requests every year. But uh, that report that was issued and, and was sent to all board members, uh, there is really valuable demographic information in there. And I would encourage every board member over the summer uh, to set aside a little time and scroll through that report. And I think you'll be impressed by, uh, by what you read. So I'd like to move that uh, this committee be continued for another year. Okay, uh, time for the vote. Is there anyone opposed to uh, renewing the special committee on racial equity? Uh, is there anyone uh, abstaining? I am, I have to. Okay, uh, Chuck is abstaining. All right, so we're good for another year to go. Okay, last one, special committee on veteran services. Sergio is in Italy. Um, Julia has uh, volunteered to speak to this resolution. Um, Julia? Uh, yeah, good evening. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not as good at these things as Bob is, but I believe we started last year. Um, we are trying to take on veteran specific issues. One thing that we have taken over is the Memorial Grove Veterans Day project. Um, and we humbly ask that you renew us for another year. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, anyone opposed to renewing the Veterans Committee? Anyone abstaining? Okay, you're good to go. And now our uh, next item, and thank you, Julia. Discussion of the Executive Committee meeting minutes of June 1st, 2022. Um, any discussion, I'll move right along. Approval of the board meeting minutes of May 10th, 2022. Um, is there any discussion? So uh, is there anyone opposed to approving the minutes of May 10th, 2022? Is there anyone abstaining? Okay, so we're good. And last but not least, miscellaneous business. Um, um, I one one yeah. quick thing. Yes. Sorry not to mess up your mojo. I, um, I got a late communication from Catalyst um, organization. There's going to be a um, Catalyst program of Partnership for Parks is having a community input forum on July 12th in Washington's Walk um, as part of their effort to form a volunteer group in Washington's Walk. Um, so it starts at 6 p.m. and will continue to 8 p.m. There will be Spanish translation, a porta potty, tables, chairs, and discussion about ways to improve the park. So everybody is invited. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Steve, I see your hand. I just want to, since it's our last meeting of the year, I just want to thank uh, the officers and especially Laura for leadership, patience, oh. resilience, grit, <laughs> <laughs> um, and coffee. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Uh, on behalf of all the uh, the officers. Um, okay, uh, let me say that I wanna wish everyone a, a wonderful, wonderful and healthy summer and uh, we'll be very busy and uh, we'll see you in September. So thank you and thank you for your patience tonight. Okay, and very good discussions. Uh, oh, last hand, I do see Rob. Is there something I forgot? The second executive committee um, minutes, do you need to get those approved now or could they wait till September? No, that'll wait till September. Okay, good. On the agenda. I just didn't want it to slip by. Yeah. Good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.